Hmm. Yeah. It's happening. It is happening. The end of a long day and a bit of lunch. Lunch? Dinner, lunch, one or the other. Anyway. We're about to do something. Hopefully something awesome. Hmm. Okay. Excuse me eating, but you know, needs must. So today we're going to be designing something using Autodesk Fusion 360. And it's going to be an audio project. I should probably take the effort to actually share this with the Twitters. Let's share it on the Twitters. Let's write that. Design a speaker. A 3D printable speaker. Yeah, that's exactly it. Let's do that. Okay. Oh, stupid keyboard. Fat fingers. It's all happening. Right. Excellent. So I guess I got to first rummage through my box of stuff. So if you're like me, you'll have a box of stuff. And I'm just going to design something to use the stuff because it's so messy around here. I need to just clear up a lot of the bits and pieces I order for projects and never use up. So I was going through a box the other day and I found some speakers. And they look a little bit like this. They're pretty much the same kind that you'd get in a monitor, but you'd have them turned sideways like that and put in the bottom. Eight ohm speakers. I did find another kind of speaker that I think would be a little bit neater and a lot, a lot smaller a print, but that I only have one of them. And I think if we want to use a stereo amp, we're going to need to really need two speakers. These were really cool speakers, by the way, for arcade cabinets. That's exactly the size you want if you've got an arcade cabinet. If you can see, it's hard to describe, so I'm just going to hold up a ruler. It's basically around six and a half centimeters width to width. And if uh, that's two and a half inches, more or less, who knew for you in old money? So if you're playing along at home, now's a good time to fire up Fusion. And we're going to work out a series of cuts just to do this simple model. I think it would be nice to have it as a single piece. So something that you can screw the, I don't know if it actually could be totally a single piece, but you can certainly design it with a single piece where something that you can screw the speaker into. Yeah, but it'd be a bit ugly from the front. So maybe we might want a separate bezel. So we might design it to accommodate that. So let's start. First things first is to measure your speaker. In fact, let's make a space claim model. So I'm going to just take some loose measurements. It's about 12 and a half centimeters long by uh, 7.8. It's better we just start designing right away, to be honest, before we just forget the measurements. So we're going to put that down there. Let's start at the center. And we're going to go 12.5 in that direction. And we're going to go, ooh, 7.8. don't know if we need it so. Uh, and that should be centimetres, the other one, of course. 125. There we go. Hey, ZX Renew, how are you, mate? Are you well? And I think we need to allow a depth of, let's say... 3.567, let's give it 3.7, add a tiny bit of tolerance, 37 millimeters. Why am I talking in centimeters all of a sudden? Yeah, that's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty crap model for a speaker, to be honest with you. We should probably figure out a way of making that look a little bit neater. Now you've got other ways of this. You can actually sketch on top and then cut out the sketch. Hey, Floating Fat Man, how's it doing? All doing good, everybody, that's cool. That's cool. I've had a, a pretty good day and I'm just eating my dinner while we're doing this. But I will actually just join the Discord as well. If anyone wants to chat Discord, 
it's not about the design necessary. A lot of it's chat based, isn't it? Mm. So I better open that up. <laughs> I'm just going to test my audio settings. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. Seems to be working. So we'll hear anybody in Discord. Okay. Let's see. What am I making? So Floating Fat Man, I've got um, a couple of these speakers. And I have a few um, amplifier boards. So I want to make just, I want to use use up this tat that's plaguing me by just turning them into something useful like speakers. So then I can either use them or give them away or do anything else with them. And in fact, I just saw over there a USB audio adapter, which I could combine with the amplifier and make a USB plug-in speaker. So it's just the enclosure to start with. Oh, you're on your recliner having a snooze. I hope I didn't wake you. <laughs> what a what a time to exist where you can sit in a recliner and be alerted to entertainment right cylinder so that is a, I'm just looking at some shapes to see if there's something that's more speaker shape I'm wondering if you could make something that's cylindrical and then warp it out to I want to say an ellipse No, I don't think I want to warp it out. Let's see how else. I think this is probably speakery enough, unless we really want to make a round speaker that just follows it. But there's no point. The mounting holes for this speaker are square. So I think for all intents and purposes, we could just treat it as a square. Although, of course, we would have to take into account this shape at the back. Oh, why would I choose something? Yeah, Kevin, that's the problem, right? Hi, hey, Kevin. And hi, you know, welcome to Um why would I choose a damn shape, right, that I have no idea how to make a cut for? This is like really where it's pushing me. <laughs> yeah, like that, man, make a soundbar. Yes, let's make a soundbar. Something that's totally like uh, linear. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Okay, give me a sec. I think I think it's worth trying to figure out how we might do it, though, at least. Um, you know, it's, it's maybe a Taurus. Hmm. I know a Taurus is just going to have the similar properties to the sphere. We, we need something. And how do you elongate? No, that's, I'm not even sure that's a real word. Sweep. Damn it. We actually have for some users of Fusion 360 that if they join, they would actually be able to help us here. I'm showing, I'm showing my limitations now after smashing out some amazing 3D prints recently. This is like, oh, Andy doesn't know how to do this. Let's try the sketch thing though. I know people are using the sketch, so let's see how that works. Do you click it on there and you have this sketch? So look, you have a different palette. See at the top, the sketch palette. I'm gonna move this in a little bit because I think, there you go, so we won't be obfuscated by the chat. Now, center diameter circle, a spline. Ah, ellipse, there you go, there's an ellipse tool. So I think you'd pick what is in the center In fact, that didn't help me out because it didn't actually choose the actual center of that shape. <laughs> Let's do that properly. So we're going to choose ellipse and we're going to... Does it give you a... Sh I thought fusion gave you uh, an indicator when you're on the center of a shape. I can't even remember what it is now. 75, 76, is it 78? So if we decided that... 39 in... I think that's close enough. That looks like it. Yeah, it did. It did do that for me. Right. So place the first axis point. We place it there. Oh, that. Let me have a look at this. That could be close, to be honest with you. I'm doing doing the holding it up to the screen and eyeballing it trick. Oh, my word. That looks perfect. Spot on. OK, great. A tesseract. What's a tesseract? That sounds like... Uh, yeah, ZX Renew, I did. It's been a long day. I, I admit now that I'm thinking. Now that you're asking that, I seem embarrassed a little bit about it. But I, uh, I want to be right. I'm happy to use a calculator to work that out some. Right. Mm. Mm hmm. So now we have that shape. Let's see what happens. I, I've never used this successfully. So let's do finish sketch. 
Right, so we have that. Ah, oh, that's exactly what we want. So um, we can just use combine. No, we don't want to do that. First, we want. Let's do press pull. Is fine for that. We want that. And what I'm going to say. Let's see what it looks like. Where they intersect. Boom. So now. Oh, now I've learned something. That's it. End of stream. Hey, Mr. Agony. It's okay. We're designing a speaker enclosure, and what we've got on the screen at the moment is the representation of the speaker, so we can just design the box around it. Although now we have this tool, as in a, a, a body, a 3D body to use as a tool, I think we might go a little bit more uh, sophisticated and use that sketch again to try to get the additional shapes. Do you see the flange on the end? If we can capture that flange, I'm starting to think we can up the game on this enclosure and make it a little bit neater. Excuse the munching. Right, I'm going to move the microphone away. Let's get into sketch mode again. Where the heck was it? Create. <laughs> Create sketch. On here. So the problem with this, I don't have a protractor on my desk. I only have a very hard time working out these angles from eyeballing it and using my Pythagoras, Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent it with a rectangle first and then go about figuring out how we're going to get the shape a bit nicer. And that's easy because if you think about it, look, a rectangle is just that. I was going to say we want it to match the vertices of the uh, ellipse, but you don't have a vertex on an ellipse, do you? Mm, not last time I checked. Okay, so that's pretty much that rectangle. Uh, what we can do, you see, we can nobble it in the 3D domain. We can actually trim that edge down in the 3D domain, but I think this, I'm liking this sketch approach. So I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to push pull it back down and then come back into sketch and modify it. I, I really like, I really like this um, methodology right now. So I'm going to cancel that because I've selected. I can't figure out what I'm looking at at this point. Okay, that please. Whoa, okay, I don't know. Let's see, where are we? Sometimes you get confused in the 3D world. Am I looking at the top? Am I looking at it from the bottom? I'm looking for the side. Okay, so you can see there, that's the side. And that's the little flangey pans we just created. Let's measure the depth on that. Hey, Sam, how's it going? What are you up to? Now, that's really thin. It's like a really mega thin piece. It's not even a millimetre. It's actually exactly half a millimetre. But I'm going to allow it one millimetre to give us some play. And I promise you it won't be enough. Let's just check the direction. We have to give it minus one millimeter. So that's that. Let's have a look at that again. Boom. That's looking lovely. Let's go back into sketch. I tell you what, I'm getting on with this sketch now. This has uh, opened up a whole new possibilities of design for me. Uh, Sam, yes, I'm well and happy. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Critter Hunter, yeah, about the joystick, it's done. The, the new enclosure... Oh, let me get it for you. I know we haven't had a report back in the stream yet. Oh, I should have brought you the other one. I've made two of them, but I've actually got one here with the joystick in it. Um, I'm waiting on some cables so I can finish this build. But yeah, that's the new design. And it's mega rigid. I've got a really super nice... Um, design where I've put in a lot of interfaces into that so it all interlocks properly. It doesn't have any shear force on it. The bottom of the case is a bit deeper to allow you uh, more room for stuff inside and the full length of this, the particular joysticks I have to let them have clearance at the bottom. A um, little weird issue with my 3D printer. You can see it's a bit thin there so that's just a 3D printer issue. And look, I did a really nice badge relief here so that the little back office badge sticks right in there. It's cute. I'm really happy about that. That's neat. Anyway, okay. Oh, ha, 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 floating fat man. We are now... I, I've just ordered the V2 of those boards. Those boards are going to be coming online soon enough, honestly. Um, in test right now. 
But let me just shove my this in my face and then I'll go on about. I feel I need to get rid of this dinner in front of me. I need my full space for the ruler. Ah. Mm, okay. I'll be quiet while I do this for a sec. Hang on. <laughs> oh, now, how, oh, that's mirror. No, we don't want that. How do you draw a triangle? Floating fat man. They're going to be popular, I can tell you. The output, I don't want to, I don't want to pull my own, I was going to say, I don't want to pull my own chain. That sounds weird. Do you pull your own chain? Um, blow my own trumpet. That board, the output from it is phenomenal. It is crystal clear on a Famicom. It's unbelievable. If you've ever used a Famicom, which is NTSC-J, on any TV even that supports NTSC-J, sometimes a PAL will support it without sound, it looks terrible. Jail bars, color runs, all that junk. This is just like looking at digital output. It's absolutely amazing. Um, Critter Hunter, it's just a, it's, it's, it just, uh, okay, so Bard Snagglebug, you're asking what I'm, I'm going to get to Critter I'm, um, I'm on keto right now, deciding to get back into fitness. So this is a green type salad with chicken mayo. And it's really good. Critter Hunter, um, I'm not really planning on, on commercially selling joysticks. That said, extra news domain. However, I do have a number of the components to make a bunch of them. So what I would propose is, I know that a lot of people don't have 3D printers and I've got a bunch so I can rapidly print a whole load of shells. I'm going to do a kit of the stick, the buttons, the shell, and maybe the Atari lead, the DD9 lead, and people can just assemble their own. Yeah. And if you want to use it for the retro pie and all of those other things, I can definitely, we can work in the Discord and hook you up. There's loads of people. It would be really fun to do that. We can try making our own RetroPie interface using either a board. I can make a board for it, or we can use maybe some sort of um, ESP, uh, say ESP, ST uh, arm board or something like that. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. If, you, if you're going to go the route for making your own joystick, you need to learn it all. There's no point. There's no point buying a 3D printed joystick when really good joysticks exist in the market anyway. This is this is building one so that you can learn and have that pleasure of, of doing it. Right. So, um, yeah, Bard Snagglebug, I have to admit, I've not been taking good care of myself for the last few months. And um, over the last few weeks, I've definitely had a little bit more of a bee in my bonnet. And I'm really starting to take care and I'm feeling better about myself taking more exercise and it's like that cycle right you start feeling happier and, and, and better stronger fitter so it's time to time to just start running again get ready for all those events start signing up for some races and start kicking ass now let's kick ass by trying to figure out how to draw a damn triangle I think we need to find something that lets us do a polygon so we've got something called a line no nope. Line circle. Are you, ah, we do have a polygon. A circumscribed polygon, but I think... Let's start with this, but I have a nasty feeling. This is a polygon as in um, like a hexagon or something like that. That doesn't help us. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's. How do we do this? Conic curve. This is, this is tricky as hell. Oh yeah, thanks Bard Snagglebird. Yeah, no, I don't want to be a downer and I don't want to be a downer for everybody, right? Um you you have to you have to uh you're aware of it. Anybody, I think anybody in this Discord right now, triangles have three sides. Def oh what? You do a polygon with three sides. Let's try that. Um anybody who's no, that's the size. Anybody who's so oh yeah, you're right. Hmm, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see these these features here. Edge polygon. What's an edge polygon? No, what's that? Let's undo that. I think I think you're right. It's polygon is the way to go. Um, okay, let's try an edge polygon. As I was saying, sorry. Any anybody who has any kind of um, self-awareness of their mental health we will know when they're not feeling up and that's the problem uh, okay let's just nobble this thing 
You're a complete physical wreck, Floating Fat Man. We got this, Floating Fat Man. We can do this. We can fix that. Let me be um, your motivator. So, I tell you what, I'd love that. We could motivate each other. Hey, Mark, how's it going? It's doctor to you, mate. Uh, <laughs> floating Fat Man, I tell you what. For every bit of activity you do, yeah? It could be just going for a walk. I promise to do tenfold that activity. Yeah, or something equally as horrible, right? So let's say you walk one mile. I'll promise to walk, did I say tenfold? Ten miles. This could get hard. I'll run ten miles. I think I'll probably prefer running at the morning. Um, so if you do like bash out some steps on the stairs or something, I will then climb up a hill here. We can do this. I like this. I think I think this has got some merit. I think this has got some merit. Floating fat man. I I know all about being fat. I'm not saying I'm massively overweight right now, but I have been fat, I promise you. Right. Let's I th I think I'm locked. I think this damn polygon thing is locked. I'm going to just do a total different approach if we don't get any more joy out of this because it's just it's just pointless, right? So I think Let's just cane that. Shall I show you how I do it in 3D? Let's do that. I'll show you how I do it in 3D. Whether or not it's the right way or the wrong way, I don't know, but this is how I would normally do this. So I'm just gonna do it that way. I thought I was gonna learn how to be a better person right now, but it's clearly not gonna happen. So what I would do is I would start by making a box on this plane, and I'll bring it out something like that and you're like oh, okay what's that so you'll see what's going on imagine now you're tooling you're actually making a tool in a out of in a in a workshop this is this is my approach so we're taking that and we're going to say it as a new component so this is a new tool basically in here this is our drill bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select move on that. And this isn't accurate, by the way. I'm just eyeballing this. And I'm going to rotate it through holding up to the screen. And by the way, this works super well because a lot of things will align to a real world dimension. See, there you go. This is a 20 degree. I'm telling you, this is a 20 degree edge on there. It's just easy. I can just hold it up and see it's 20 degrees. That's fine. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is move that into position where it intersects with that curve, right? So what you can see is if I have four of those tools placed around this shape, yeah, plus another four to take the other edge in and then use them as a tool body and cut them away, you'll end up with the right shape. That's it. So what do we do? So you're going to do some stairs work, Floating Fat Man. Okay. So I've, I feel cr Critter Hunter. Come on now, that's exactly it. Let's work on those 20 pounds. Um, peg tooth's right, by the way. If you do really want to be noticed when you're running, don't move your arms at all. It looks proper scary. So what I do now is I select move here and go down here and click create copy. And then what that'll do is let me magically do that with it and again I'm not by any means claiming this is going to be accurate but what I'm going to do is just I want it to intersect and in fact if we zoom up to this one you can see there's a little gap once you zoom in this far you're talking fractions of a millimeter at that point it's going to be accurate for what we're doing it's not like a close tolerance race engine or something there we go all right pretty good now the tricky pit we want to copy this Dum, dum, dum. There we go. There might be a way of doing this, of doing a mirror at the same time, but I don't know how you do it. So I'm just going to copy it over here for now. Get it out of the way. We want it, actually, it was only a 20 degree angle. We can actually just, we could have done that in the move because we're. Ah, okay, so you see it says move minus five. There we go. Where are we? We're back. So that's now move zero. So you want to go this way to 20. Oh no, it's not doing it. Hang on. <laughs> the Adams family started when Uncle Fester fights. So that's minus 20. Mm -mm -mm. You want minus 40? Boom. We're done. So let's position that over there. 
You're going to make me run 100 miles. When's that? Let me see. Sorry, I, this chat's getting out of hand. Let me have a look. Uh, uh, uh. Run 10 miles so I'll have to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I did that in Jaw 24 last time. I am. Uh, I think I'm technically an ultramarathon runner. Technically by actually doing it. So yeah, <laughs> bring it. Tell How long do I have to do the 100 miles? I'll do it over a week. I could probably do it over a weekend, but I need to be able to uh, still do other stuff in my life. I won't be able to walk beyond that. Right, let's create another copy. This is really this is this might seem tedious but this is what this is what it's all about isn't it this is this is how long it takes to design something properly if you want to go into sketchup and knock something out in 2 minutes go ahead but if you want to make something that you can actually get a factory to make for you in the far east this is how you need to do it right so let's go to modify and then we go to combine now so we select the target body which is that main one we're going to select our tool bodies which are these four Boom. And instead of join, we're going to say cut. Bang. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Mm. I feel that could be radiused a bit better, to be honest with you, but let's go for it. I can't be bothered. Yes. I mean, that's still looking pretty speakery. And now I'm allowing the back of the speaker to be that full width of that ellipse because I think you need a bit of air behind the speaker. Just let it move around, just for it to flow. I would walk one. Oh. You destroyed your left knee on a motorbike crash. What? So you're the bionic man that everybody uh, used to talk about when I was the kid. Was it like six million dollars it cost? How much was your knee? That way we can collaborate the efficacy of your repair work. Right, we want holes now. Hmm. These holes, five mil holes. I want five mil holes. I quite like this hole tool. It's quite interesting. Look, <laughs> you've got this hole. I'm moving a hole around. It's interesting because you've got a CAD concept of the absence of something. So we want it to be five millimeter. Now, the reason, by the way, you have holes, and you can see here there's all these different hole types. We're 3D printing everything, so it doesn't really matter. But you have to remember that Autodesk Fusion has a CAM module, and you might be milling this. Well, you might be you might need a tool change and it's actually going to put a real hole in by using a drill that's why you're specifying them as holes otherwise you could just specify them as cylinders and then do a cut with a cylinder but this is just allowing you to set up all of that as if it's a drill which we don't care about so i'm going to click i'm not going to click okay just yet we need to position this damn thing right i don't even know if you can move a hole after you've placed a hole, I don't think you can move it. It's a pretty tricky thing. So we need to measure this now. So we want the hole to be three millimeter, Uzi three millimeter from the edge. I love how that doesn't update right away, by the way. Look, I'm moving it. We'll have to let go. Is it doing it, isn't it? 3.3. Oh, that, hang on, that. What? Oh, it's from the center. So we need it to be. Do the maths, guys. Four and a half. Four and a half. I managed to do that. You can't say I don't know me maths. Right. That's close enough. And that one... I suppose it is, it's radius in the actual thing, so that would also be the same four and a half. Okay, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now, there is a way, if you know the magic source, to get it to do all four holes. Um, I don't know what happens if I click that. Oh, bullshit. Can we undo it? No! Okay, I'm going to show you the other way of doing it as well if it's a cylinder because holes piss me off, right? That's fine. Do it properly, use a hole, but don't bother. Just use a cylinder if it's just, you're just making a cut here, it's fine. So we're going to just do that. We're going to make the cylinder super long, super longer even than that. Bang. Yeah, you've got this project, the projection of it. It's fine, so you can always see that. We know it's going to cut through that top. I'm going to say new body, great. I'm just going to grab it. You can do this however you want, be it whole, be it just a cylinder, but I'm going to do it this way right now because then I can do that. I do lose the uh, placement from the edge. So here's another trick I do. I'll put the cylinder there. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. Go on, do a box, draw a box here like that. Set the box to be three millimeters by three millimeters. Oh no, it was 4.3. 
five. Uh, three by three is fine. We don't have to stick to their convention now. The box doesn't have to have any particular height because it doesn't matter. We're just using it for reference. And then I'm just going to select move and I'm just going to dump that box right here in this corner. And then I'm going to take our cylinder and I'm going to move that to that three millimeter edge. So we go there. Okay, that's three millimeters on that. Let's move our box again. Ideally, now we're going to have to rotate it that 20 degrees. So you could do it that way. And then I'm going to move the box here. So we get that somewhere there. That's good enough. Whatever. Click OK. And now I'm going to move that cylinder down to there. Done. So that's where it should be. So Mr. Agony, um, does this have the advantages? Yeah, I, you know, I like, I think it has some advantages. Be oh, bollocks. I, <laughs> pardon me. Oh, no, no, no. Redo, redo. It does have some advantages, and I'll show you why. Because you can just, you can keep all these tools, one, if you want to, yeah? So you've got that choice. Um, but also you can, you've got just more control, because I can decide when I want to make those cuts and then what the uh, end result has. You see what I mean? It's a bit of, it's a, as you say, it's a bit of a shenanigans. But you'll see now. Let's figure out how we mirror, for example. Um, to be honest with you, I don't end up mirroring too much because what I just do is end up moving. So if we've used that here, yeah, that shape, um, I'll often, uh, this is just placing the center point of it, by the way, which is bloody and freaking annoying. Right, hang on. Let's do it that way. I want to move and I want to move that, please. Because of the shapes often, if you want more of them, you're just moving it to the opposite side, right? So you're just doing that. And then again, we can just use that. Oh, I like the way that move freaked out because I hadn't finished it. Just make sure you hit OK. That's more or less where I want it. I'm just going to hit OK here. Right. Hey Rob, how's it going? Are you um are you gonna make any of these things I design, Rob? What's I only do it for you, you know. Not all these other hanger ondas. These are for you, Rob. Everything I do is driven by you. Okay, let's get that in here. Pop that there. Very tedious, I know. I'm gonna eyeball that three mil on the right. I don't care. I think it's close enough to that. Done. You know what? Let's just do it. I can't delete. Why, why is it selecting this as a face? That's really bloody annoying. I don't want it as a face. I just want you to delete the whole frigging thing. You know what you can do? This is the lamest thing, by the way, because of the way of these um, these cads are sort of subtractive. You see um, that shape that we want to get rid of. Sometimes it's just easier to go to something like extrude. Oh. It's almost like that frigging thing doesn't exist now. Hang on. Where is it? There it is, yeah? Extrude that. What is going on here? I think I think Fusion has got confused. It's a very confused creature now. Right. There we go. I've just deleted it out of existence now. <laughs> by cutting itself out of existence. Now I'm just going to do some crude copies. This is boring now. If it's boring for me, it's definitely boring for you. So I'm just going to do that. Because they're now more or less in the plane, you can just move them that way, right? You'll see that again here. I'll demonstrate that again. So we're going to just select that one. We're going to say Create Copy. I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can see it all. And you see, I'm just pulling it. It's locked. It's locked within that plane. And we can just zoom in. You can see where 3 millimeters is just by the, the uh, counting the grid squares, right? One, two, three. That's it. Done. Absolutely fine. Right. Thank God. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just do those final tool cuts by using combine. Now the reason the reason all this work's going into, by the way, I'm going to tell you. Uh, oh, Bart Snagelberg, your back office show shirt. That's awesome. I hope it's uh, which one is it? Which which generation is it? Light blue or dark blue? There's two of those. Hmm. Tool bodies. Click OK. Now you can keep you can keep these tools if you want. Um, you know what? I'm going to keep them. You know why? 
we're going to keep these cylindrical tools. So that cut's been made, but we're going to keep those cylindrical tools because that'll be handy when we come to do the case and we want to make the holes. Remember the drill holes for the case, the screw holes? So yeah, let's keep that. But what you can do, let's see if we can find them. Where are they? Is it that? Is it that? Is it that? Is it that? No? How is it not that one? That one. Right, so what we're going to just do is call them screw H. Screw H1. This is handy, by the way. Just do, always do this. If you're going to work with something for any length of time, if it's something apart from the most trivial things, put these labels in. Otherwise, you're going to get lost pretty quick. Right. Good, we've got those for later. So making a enclosure now is super easy. Well, depending on the shape. Let's say you're going to go for a cylinder, right? A square. I like how the let's say we're going to go for a cylinder and then correct it to a square as if they're even slightly alike. You just really have to choose your dimensioning. So you could just say that's, I want it to be a normal boxy sized speakery thing and why bloody thing right 95 no 98 mm, yeah that's close enough right so you're gonna say I, I want did that just disappear <clears throat> okay let's do it again <sighs> okay okay I want it to be like something similar to that and I deleted it because I put it in the wrong place. I'm going to start again properly. Let's, okay. That's got clearance there, clearance. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Right, okay. So something like that. So just work your way around the whole edge, making sure that you've got those clearances. Oh, I clicked the right mouse button. Oh, phew. There we go. Okay. So you've got something like that. And if you look at it from the, the right, you can see it's just placed below, which is kind of cool. That's fine. It gives you a little bit of allowance then between the two things. All you really need to do is change this operation from a cut to a new component. So it's just independent. And you could decide where does it go. It's going to go right up, say, to the front grill. Yeah. And I'm going to just, you see there, moving it bang. So it's now perfectly in line. If anything, you want it slightly out of line. But let's just say that's where it lives, right? You say that's where my speaker lives. You can guess what's going to come next. Yeah, you can absolutely guess it. So what we do is we're going to click that the target body is our new shape. And our tool is, of course, our speaker. And we're going to say, keep the tool. We definitely don't want to delete that thing. We're going to say, OK, boom. Uh, did I just select the wrong things? Let's undo that for a second. I just, while I'm here, actually, I really like the idea of labeling this one up before we forget it, speaker. Let's do that again. <clears throat> Combine. So we want to select this as the target body. That's the tool. Yes, and we want to cut. That looks better. And keep the tool. And then we want to hide the tool. There you go. Oh, see a barred snagglebug. Sorry, go, go. Sorry, you'll. Um, I, I feel I'm not interacting as much in the chat, but you guys are keeping up the work. It's fine. I'm in the Discord. If you want to chat, chat in the Discord. That's absolutely better for me right now. Okay, even my last bit sad. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm just studying this, by the way. That's what I'm messing around with it. Mm. I think we're all right. I think these cuts here represent uh they're, they're bigger they should be bigger than what we've got but if you're ever worried by the way that you want to allow a little bit more in fact we could do that let's do that there's probably better ways of doing it but what you can do if you can find the face and i think you remember i did a sketch i think i need to turn that sketch off yes there we go so the sketch Let's turn off that sketch that we used earlier. What you can do is find, uh, press and pull and select the face there. And depending on the geometry, if you're lucky, you can see there, minus a mil, bang. We've actually allowed an extra mil by doing that. Let's see, if you hold down shift, 
See? We can just allow a little bit more movement there, and give us an extra millimeter on that side. So that's what we've done. And then we're going to, let's do the back end first, and then we'll do the sides at the last step. So we're going to select, we're going to choose, press pull. You can use extrude as well sometimes in the uh, a similar way, but extrude has different rules. So that's that, another millimeter. And then let's give one more. Hey, Neil, how's it going? You can pull my face. Wipe the smile off their feces. Do you remember that? That was a Viz thing, by the way. Was it badger pelt toilet paper? Wipe the smile off their feces. One millimeter. Uzi one millimeter. <laughs> I wonder if there was a one millimeter caliber gun for ants. Think of an ant. That would be like heavy artillery for an ant. Okay, right. So now we have our main speaker holes, which is really cool. And if you want, you can in Fusion save a save point. So we're just going to say V1. Just like your save games in Quake. But don't do it where you save your save game just before the ba bad boss right, canes you. You know, you've got 1% health. And then you've only got quick saves up to that point because you've just been lacing through it. And then you're fighting that big, big badass boss. And then... Just as you come back from your save game, he shoots you. And every single time you play the game, that's exactly what he does. Right, plate is out of the way. Last bit of munching. <clears throat> oh, choking. I'm, do I'm definitely doing the back end first. It does look like a techno soap dish. Right, let's just do our screw holes because it's annoying me now. We've still got them. Do you remember those those guys? Oh, what did we move? Oh shit, did we change the geometry? I think I accidentally moved the whole thing. Now if we look in the timeline, down here at the bottom, you can actually find this. It's kind of cool. It's like, if you remember, everything in CAD has a knock-on effect. So these four steps are where we did those faces, and then that was the combine. One of here is a move. There, you see that move? There's a move right in there. You can actually, I'm, I'm almost scared to do it, but if we click delete, let's see what happens. Ooh, it deleted the actual thing. Let's just not do that. All right, I'm just gonna do it the simple way. We can do the press pull on our hole there. How deep do we want it? If we're using self tappers, they're gonna come in maybe a 10 mil. So what I'd do is I'm going to bring this... Oh, sh uh, uh, come on. I'm going to change this to a... Um, there we go. Okay, so we're going to minus the 1 mil, and then we need a further 10, so it's just minus 1, 1, mm, all the, um, all the 11 millimeters, parabellum, right. We're going to do the same. Piss off. <laughs> Stop selecting stuff. Right. Same again. We can do this on all four, by the way. You don't have to do it one at a time. So I'm just going to try to do it on all four. There we go. Minus 11 millimeters. There. I like that it was doing 11 meters there. 12T millimeters. That was it. 12T. 12T. So we've got now our basic enclosure looking pretty enclosure-ish, but it doesn't look particularly nice because it hasn't got the curvy ends, the curvy sides. So we can decide, do we want a filet, a filet, or do we want a chamfilet there, a chamfilet there? I think we want a filet. Let's try a filet. Don't you love when people go to McDonald's and they order a fillet o fish? I want a fillet o fish. Oh, bum. I selected the wrong thing. Oh, no. I'm selecting like a madman. Let's select those. Okay, that's what we want. So let's see. Do we want... Mm, mm, oh, no. It doesn't like that. Let's just try for one edge first before we uh, mess it up. Because of the math. There's maths involved. Okay, so look at that. Oh, yeah, that would... <laughs> 
That would be a super effective speaker if we did that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's try selecting all four edges properly now. One, two, three. I need one of those mice that was like a ball. Do you remember? I've actually got one in the cupboard. It's cereal or something annoying, but it's like a ball and it moves in three directions. You can twist it, pull it, push it, bend it. I think LGR did a video about those actually. Oh, I don't know, you know. I'm not I'm not necessarily convinced about this. It looks something like it looks a bit old fashioned, doesn't it? It's, let me have a look at it. That does look speakery though, I have to admit. That does reek of of Amstrad speaker. You know why? Because check this out. At the front, it's got the curve, and at the moment, we don't. I'm going to click OK. We're locking that in. Why can't I rotate the damn friggin' thing? Anyway, OK. I must have done something. But yeah, you see at the back, it's got a square edge, and on the front, it's curved. It's like they haven't bothered rounding it off because it's made out of four panels. So that's what's giving this this retro look, is because it's emulating. It's emulating as if you're making it out of um, four mitered pieces of a of a profile, and that looks terrible. And I love it, so we're keeping that. Now I'm now I'm inspired. I'm totally, absolutely inspired now. Okay, check this out, Floating Fat Man. I think you're going to agree on this. Let hear, hear my design thoughts being broadcast into your brain. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put leave it like this, and then I'm going to put four pieces of Velcro here. And I'm going to make a grill out of some old tights or something. You know, like that bit of grill that always sticks on the front of speakers? I've got some in front of me that look quite cool. But I'm talking about something really crap. Think of a material. What could we do that? Yeah, wood grain texture. I think paint it wood grain. This is going to be amazing. I love this. Now, I'm just going to analyse it to see. I think we actually have room. Because we allowed this thing is so much so deep and it's this shape, we actually have room to put electronics in there. So I don't think we have to make an allowance for that, but we can. Let's just check there because I think this speaker, it's deep, but it doesn't have to be. I think it's okay because if we're 3D printing it, it will just fill this with a, a hollow mesh anyway. But oh, thick black winter tights. So Kevin's wood grain texture, floating fat man's big fat, fat, big fat winter tights. I meant big. Thick black winter tights. I'm not saying you have big fat winter tights. Or do you? No judgment here. A sweaty sock. Yeah, a sweaty sock. But it needs to be it needs to have a framework. Um okay, so I might design that framework now though, because I will make a 3D printed frame that's gonna go into that that you can glue on or it could use magnets. Um I, ha I, you know, I have magnets and I have things we could measure and model into this. But you know what? I'm not going to use those. If I make the fishnet tights, I'm just going to glue it on. They're never coming off. I don't need to see. It's like, it's like you've got your Amstrad speakers and you're going, check it out, guys. Check out that cone action. Who cares about that? Look at that. Check out that cone action. No, not happening. Right. Okay. Where should the hole go, though? I feel... I feel the hole should go in the bottom. I'm going to I'm going to do something special with our bottom hole. I think our bottom hole needs needs something a little bit more thoughtful. So check it out. I'm going to go into a different view so we can get a little bit more I think wireframe with hidden edges. I love that. I love the wireframe with hidden edges it doesn't give you anything useful. Just regular wireframe. There you go. Like your dad's AutoCAD. So what we want, I think the hole should be as low down to the bottom. Um, look at this cone. Yeah, sad Ken, you and your holes. I, I don't know. I think the hole should be quite low to the bottom. Oh, I'm not entirely sure where yet. Um, let's think of what size hole we want, though. It doesn't have to be particularly big a hole. I reckon it, I'm feeling it around here, to be honest with you. For me, I feel the hole should exist here, and I think... Ooh, it's going to be quite a big hole if we make it 3 mil, but it's a good size. Uh, I'm going to go back into the other shaded with hidden edges view, to be honest with you, because we're going to get lost otherwise. I'm just going to have a look here. Vroom. Let's see if that's what we want. We're going to pull that. We're going to do a tool operation at the same time, so we're just going to tool it at the same time. Bango! Let's see if that's what we want. 
and there's our hole. But I do like, I do like a radius hole. So we can, let's, well, we'll see. We'll just do a fillet if we can. Oh, ho, 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 ho. hello, hello. We have a 3D goatsy situation here. Oh my word. Oh my word, that's rude. Your hole is too rude, sir. Let's just, one millimeter is more than enough. One millimeter is all that I can take. We don't want no goatsy action. Although, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the backside goatsy. <laughs> For you hole affectionates. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Woohoo! Let's go bigger! Yeah. <laughs> you can actually make this hole big enough to damage the model. Look, I think it'll break it at some point. It's like, what? It's just all hole! It's all hole! Okay. Enough. Enough. Children, settle down. Bang. Bango, bingo, bango. That is, let's just give it some action, rotate it round. I think, I think that's perfect. Rob, you're absolutely right. It does need a pair of hands around that, but this is going to be so easy to print. You're just going to print it like that on the bed. Literally, you'll just print it flat on the bed and let it come up. Now, you know what? Oh, sorry. I'm wearing walking shoes. Uh, that was kindly, kindly donated to me. And they've in, they locked themselves into my chair. Now I've got an idea here. Should we take it to the next level? To be honest with you, how big are we? I think it's almost bigger than my. Oh, it's bigger than my print, Brad. But what we can do, I like the idea of having these interlocking somehow, so that when you're not using them, you could you could put them face to face. Uh, Crit Hunter, good luck on the beer situation. I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking maybe. Why is this locked in rotate? This is craziness. Ah, oh, I've, I've I've knocked it out of like a three three D view. You see this thing on the top right corner that I'm always clicking on. You see it's got a square on it. Let's orthogon. Let's check it out. I've broken it. Normally, when you click on it like this. You see now it's locked in a rotate. It, it actually should give you a 3D thing that you can actually basically not do what it's doing. So it's definitely not a right double click. No, that resets it. You see it's got that little picture of a cube on it. What have we got? No, that's the orthogonal. Damn it. So someday I'm going to figure out how we get that back to what it was, but I don't think it's going to be today. Okay, let's not worry about that. Uh, floating fat man, yeah, I might put an amp in it. Um, if I put an amp in it, of course, it would need power, but I think I'd rather just a... Well, how I normally handle that is... I've got cables like this, there's a pink one, but um, I chop off the USB bit on the end, and then I use it as a nice braided power cord, because I think I'd prefer a fixed power cord on a, on a thing like that. I don't think it needs to be... Um, you know, like a USB port or a, a power thing. So I've got I've got amp chips to chuck in here. It's not it's not a problem that for something this size as well. You don't really need a lot. I'm just still just excuse me for a minute. I'm just still thinking of the fixing solution. I want okay. Wait. He's gone away. He's gone away. Where will he go? Nobody knows. But he's back. Okay, check this out. I have this magnet, and I have a load of these. Some of them broke, by the way, because when a magnet hits a magnet, it seems to turn into dust and shatter. But they're basically magnets with a little chamfery disc, yeah, and they are polarized. But what I think you could do is either you can mount some, although you do you do want that countersink. What I feel is you could mount, um, let's say, two on one speaker and two on the other, and mount washers on the opposite speakers. So they'll just go back to back together. But the cool thing is, if you put two on each speaker in opposite corners, you'll be able to stick the speakers onto a metal surface like a radiator or something. And I love that. I love that because it gets it out of the way. So I've, I've gonna let's model the magnets real quick. 
when two magnets love each other very much. Let's model the magnet. So what we need to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it from the bottom edge, right? Because we're going to mount the magnets with the counter sink sunk top ways, and it's going to be simpler for us to visualize that. So we're going to select that plane. Let's start a target point anywhere. It doesn't matter. Let's measure this up with me ruler. By the way, I found so many rulers here. I've got so many rulers, but I love them. Now, let's show you what this is because it's a magnet. It's handy. This magnet is exactly 10 millimeter. Uzi 10 millimeter. Let's lock that in. Bang. Bingo bango. Who made the song Bingo Bango? Points don't win prizes. Points don't. <laughs> Points don't win prizes. Points don't win prizes. Let me stop saying that now. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking. It's really awkward, by the way. This is. They are exactly two and a half millimeter. 2.5 millimeter. Oh no! What did you do? What did you do, you muffin head? I've broken something. Let's do that again, real quick. 4.5 millimeter. We know exactly what we want now anyway. It's fine. So we want 10 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters. Bango. Now if you rotate it, you'll see it will have drawn it out. There we go. Good. But that's not finished because it has another hole in the middle. Oh, do we want to use our drill hole? Let's try it. I'm feeling brave. Because that way we'll try to get the countersink. Drill hole. Create a hole. Oh, no. Go back. Go back to Mordor. We will take you. Mm. Now, I've no idea how to center this. It seems to have just locked in. So maybe it's happy. So I'm on the right hand side here. You can see I'm looking at all of these, these thingies. Dr countersunk hole. And I'm now filling in these measurements. So the depth of the hole, we want it to be at least 2.5. Good. I think we agree. We all agree on that. Now we want the width at the top of the counter sink. He's biting his tongue. I want to say seven and a half millimeters. Seven point five millimeters. Yeah, 90 degrees. Yep, that will do. In fact, I think that's looking really good. Um, let's OK that. See what happens. <laughs> Electro Nash, no, you're not allowed to go. Look at that. Look at that. It's like you're looking in a weird mirror. A mirror full of nibidium magnets. But that is what we're talking about right there. OK. Nigel Plenier, is he still is he still alive? Okay, let's go. I heard he turned into a real arse. Can anyone confirm or deny the arsiness? Oh my word. I've got my head in my hands. The reason is Did we need to create this? Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. The reason I'm wondering, you know. If, if we needed to create this, because ultimately we're not creating a magnet hole that has to be precisely to a magnet. We just need to create a 10. Uh, that's fine. Whatever. Shut up. 10 millimeters by 2.5. Let's give a tolerance. Let's give it three millimeters. Uh, that's good enough. Right. That's basically what we could have just done. We didn't really need to model the magnet, do we? It doesn't feel like we need to model it because we're just making the absence of it. And, of course, do not grow accustomed to the magnet because you'll resent its absence. <laughs> What's that from? Tell me now, I demand it. Okay. Piss off, magnet. We're going to just chuck these in the corner. No, I've got a brand new combiner. I think... That's looking good to me. This is just all done by eyeball. I tell you what, let's let's put it where it intersects on that fillet, the filet mignon. Uh, I'm using my eyes. 
There we go. He's using his eyes as a tool, for he is the Quisitz Hadarak. I just want to check what plane we did it, because it might be somewhere crazy. Yeah, no, that's okay. It's actually existing inside, which is what we want. Let's leave that. That's fine. Okay, so now we're just going to copy those. Bang, create copy. And we're going to draw that down here somewhere. What? Hang on. Who? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so we need to draw it down till it intersects. Bang, that's that one. Lockdown haircut. Don't you like it? Mmm. Mm, he's clean. He's so clean. He's clean and sharp. This used to be my go-to haircut, actually. When I was in university, I always cut my own hair, and I've cut my own hair now two times in the uh, last few weeks, and I'm loving it. You know what I love about it? It's just my hair is now an extension of my face. My beard is thicker than my head hair. And to wash your hair, style your hair, have your shower... It just takes seconds. It's just like washing your face. Let's move that up. It's basically a beard on your head. <laughs> and we're going to bring that down till it intersects that corner. If it doesn't intersect right away, by the way, it has quite a nice snapping thing where you can just zoom in and it will change the grid. I say that and it's still like not doing it, but sod it, that's good enough. Okay. Ah, one more tool cut. Oh, really, Electron? I do I do like her, Minsky. What's going on? There is some hair there. Is it? Now, Minsky, don't take this the wrong way because I haven't stared at your picture for very long. I just see occasionally it flash up on Twitter. If I Correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think you have the bit here bald and the hair around the edge. Now... I, I feel, for me, I've got the crown going, right? If that crown goes in, I'm going to start rocking the monk. I think that's the worst look. I think the receded up the back is a better look than the monk. <laughs> right. Let me just work this out. The Friar Tuck. Ah, the F-E-T. The F-E-T's. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that. Chestnuts roasting on the open fire. Jack Black sucking on your toes. Let's nobble these holes. Ah, oh, these holes are too small. Aren't they? We only give, we give them the exact size as the magnet. The magnet's 10 millimeters and these holes are 10 millimeters. We have the potential for a tight fit. That's fine. We just need to pop a little hole in uh, a couple of these. Hang on. <laughs> Do we put holes in four or two? Um, okay. Imagine that is your four holes. If I take off this hole and this hole... Oh, shit. <sighs> right, okay. And then I take off this hole and this hole. Yeah. And I turn it. Yeah, boy! We only need two holes. Jesus. This is like bloody Mr. Spock on Star Trek operating too many computers at once. Way too many computers at once. Ah, oh, there we go. Let's pop that in. Ooh, hang on a minute. Spam, 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 spam. Okay, I don't need this for what I'm doing. I'm not bloody totally idiotic. I'm just going to use the whole tool. We, do, we, we, we can use the whole tool in this case because it's really simple. Hole. Put a hole inside this hole. I want a two millimeter hole. I want you... Eight millimeters deep. Give us nine. Um, I want you three millimeters wide. I'm wondering if this hole is going to perforate, perforate too deep. Let's see it from. Oh, it's not. It's going to be the perfect hole. Just because she dances loco, he wants a hole. -o. The holdo. That's from Star Wars. That's the holdo maneuver. So, Mensky, what are you saying? You lost it from the front going back. 
And then your head decided it was too f cool for hair at 21 and shaving it off ever since. But that's fine, right? You, uh, you're you owning that hair, boy, or lack of. Um, I think the worst thing you could do is probably try to rock the comb over, right? Especially if you were 21. 21 with a comb over. What's going on with Stuart, by the way? I haven't followed that, but... Oh, yeah, I put in too many holes in. Screw it. I'm going to put in all the holes. Because even if we glue in a washer, we might want to screw in a... I say glue in a piece of metal, we might want to screw in a washer. So let's just hole it all up. He's well holed. He's well holed like a Christmas orange covered in tin foil with little nibbles sticking out of it. Which I am going to do this year because I think my kids need to be part of this tradition that we never really had. That are in our really cheap nasty cookbooks. Okay, let's do that. Mm. You know what? I got used. To, I used to get most of my my disowning the hay. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Rob buying the LED nets for twelve quid. You might as well throw away the decorations each year and start again. Right before I forget, I was about to say I learned all of my cooking skills from Look In magazine. Who else remembers Look In magazine? And all their recipes in Look In magazine were made out of desiccated coconut and um, some other stuff like marzipan and you'd you'd get something and you'd make a marzipan log roll it in some desiccated coconut because everything was about the desiccated coconut back then and um, that was it frankly that's that was that was food back then do we need magnets in the side just because she dances loco do we need a magnet hole oh you freaking all right bear with me a minute I, I can't stand this i need to figure out what is going on with this user interface how do we get it out of this stupid thing so all of that is to do with the view that's fine this is the viewing cube but how do you change a user interface on the viewing cube did i push the middle mouse button uh so middle mouse button is panning Right mouse button is bring up the stupid menu. What about the middle mouse button and the left at one? Oh my god, it's not doing it. Double click middle mouse. Okay. Oh, it's not doing it. What if I hold down shift? No. Alt. Control. Bloody. Oh, what's this down here? Orbit. Is that it? No. No. Constrained orbit, free orbit. Let's try free orbit. What does that do? <gasps> yes, yes, yes. That's what we want. That's what we want. Free orbit. Ah, free orbit, which is basically what the NHS tried to do. Stop people brushing their teeth to give you some chewing gum instead. Right, Sam N. We Sam N. We were really panicking. Oh, if you hold shift and middle mouse button, it rotate. Sad can you? If you're you're on the, you rocking the fusion. Are you rocking the fusion now? I hope you are. Right. Good. What else do we need? So just some features, because I want to uh, do... Um, I will do a repeat of this McBean. And by the way, again, so sorry for your loss. So sorry for your loss, the other way. Um, desiccated coconut was the... P what happened to desiccated coconut Minsky, though? What happened to it? It was all about the desiccated coconut. I still long for a macaroon. You know, I do I, I do luck a macaroon. And I don't know, by the way, not macarons. People call them macarons, macaroons. Macarons are just vile. Macaroons are lovely, coconut-y. Mm -mm. um, how did your underside pan out? Okay, so now we have free orbit. You can see we've got our um, four holes and our little mini goat's hole. Um... The, the mini goatsy hole right there. Let's go through the goatsy hole. Okay. Um, so I don't know what else we need feature-wise, really. I like it. Do we need a vent? Do we need a vent? Because all speakers, they have that hole in the back, which is to vent the power out, don't they? I know I've got one. Let me just check my vent. It's got a vent hole, and the vent hole's at the top. Yeah, we need a vent. Let's do this. Floating fat man, the amp can fit inside. There's plenty of room for the amp. Amps are teeny, teeny, tiny, 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 teeny, tiny, teeny. School style sponge with jam and desiccated coconut. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh, yeah, so Mr. Agony. The joystick, by the way. Um, Yeah, that's perfect. Um, Oh, yeah, didn't, you didn't see it. Maybe you didn't see that. Look, I already showed it today, but how could... Hang on. Let's see if there's... Does that work? No. 
No. No. No. No. No. Uh, boom. Bollocks. Boom. Hey! <laughs> He's got one somewhere, see? Professional. Right, check this out. Like that. <laughs> By the way, if anybody's an OBS user, please take my profile and make it properly. <laughs> I've just keep using it over the years and it's getting worse and worse. Focus! Focus, you f Okay. Anyway, let's just do this. So this is the uh, joystick 3D print from last time and base is now... De oh, hang on. Let me just show you. I've got another one printed. <laughs> right. I've got... And I don't know why I'm wearing the headphones because nobody's on Discord anyway. Let me take them off. I just have a comfort of putting something on my ear. It makes me feel like a radio DJ. So that is the case now. Okay. Let's do it properly. I'm going to you can see how much trouble it is to separate. This is a good fit, by the way. This is a good... It's almost an interference fit. It's so interlocked. Mm. Okay, you, do you hear that crack? Right. So, let's start with the base. In the base, we have a nice deep recess for the joysticking components. This one hasn't been... You need to clean out these holes, but these holes are ready to go. Look at that. Look at that whole feature. You have a strengthening crossbar to give it ultimate in rigidity. It's really hard to break. You also have a very deep set lip. Do you see this deep set lip here? Let me hold it up there. Look at that edge. Mm, all the way around. That features its opposite counterpart in the lid. So that interlocks nicely. You do have your four holes there nicely machined out. And of course, your recess with strong deep pegs. You see the four strong deep pegs. And of course, the ultimate. You can see it right here. The small recess for your back office badge, which looks mm, like that. Look at that back office badge fitting in there perfect. It actually is perfect. I suppose if you have an old Acer PC badge, you could use that. Oh, the button. Oh. Um, and then when you fit that, you know, you can see like that's the alignment. Before they used to just slide on each other, but now they have to interlock. So we're going to start here. Look at this at the bottom. Get that in. And then right at the top, listen to the... I'm going to... Oh. I'll, uh, you can hear the last crack. Oh, there we go. And it all clips together to form your joystick. Yeah, hopefully you'll get the parts for that. The problem is with a lot of the videos today is, uh, Sam, I don't know. I'm going to make some kits for those. I promise. I'm going to make some kits for those. Uh, a problem I have at the moment with some of the videos, you notice I like, I normally like just to turn out videos all the time, um, good nor bad. Oh, by the way, do you want to see something a bit special? I'm going to show you something a bit special. I'm going to share with you an exclusive. Let me do this. Let me do this for you guys. One second. Bear with me. I'm going outside of the room. Okay. <clears throat> He's back. He's back now. And it's not a repeat. So pump up the volume and start rocking to the beat. Okay. Check this out. I know a lot of you have been waiting on the retro nets for a good long time. And I think I showed you that enclosure or I was working on the enclosure, but I'd love to just show you. I've got a whole pile of them here. Look at this. Uh, one's in Atari gray and the rest are in white. I'm not keen on the gray, by the way, not because of the color, but because of the type of filament involved. Look, we have a bunch of these, a gaggle of RetroNet V4s. But the thing I really want to show you, and it's going to show up the most on the gray, right? Do you see that? Oh, that's the reset button. And it's so cool. I really worked hard. You will not believe how much effort goes in to engineering a reset button like that. I'm going to have to cut all the different angles. By the way, they're all serial numbered. Once I put them in the case, I couldn't read the serial number. So I hand wrote it on a piece of masking tape. Right. You hear that? But just listen to this, right? Can you hear that? Oh, oh. It's basically a tax switch, but what's really cool, I've made, because I had to engineer this, and as I said, it took a lot of engineering to make a reset button work so slick. I can actually show you the cutaway. So here's a retro net, right? Look at the cutaway. You can see right there, look at this. And that fits in with the CAD. And you can see there's a little tax switch underneath here. And then when you press it down, oh, it's actuating it ever so nice. And the, the, the plug itself, the button is actually 3D printed as well. That is how we do it. Is it ASMR? Mm. <laughs> right. So, yeah, if you're interested, they are actually going super fast. Again, 
I haven't done a video about them even or done any video about the use cases or how to use it, but they just disappear off. Every time we do them, they just disappear off. I do have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's six of them right here. And by the way, check out the USB hole for the power. Ugh. ASMR, ASMR. Okay, there you go. That's like a tech mukbang. <laughs> tech mukbang. That'd be a really cool name for a YouTube channel. I'm going to rebrand. Damn it. <laughs> Rob, you, 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 you want to copy? It's a standard module part of this. Standard, but that's a standard module. You can buy that. That's a Wemos. That part's a Wemos. That's standard. You can't see the rest of the board, Rob. And it doesn't matter if you did. You know why? Dr. A's engineering. The bit that makes this a product is the software. Can't copy that part. Right. Can we get back to it? I'm sure you're tired of looking at this haircut. Although, mm. oh, look, you can see my scalp. It's so short. I like that. Man, I think I need to go shorter on the sides. I'm going to have like number one next time. That's what we need. Then bald. <laughs> Done. <laughs> right. Well, that's it. That's the, that's the correct view again. We're back. Okay. Okay. Phew. Electron Ash. If you remember all the variants of the um, RetroNet, I used ESP8266. Um, the Wemos isn't really cheaper than it, but, it, 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 but the, there's a, there is a big problem with it. The Wemos is good from one standpoint in that it saves you a certain amount of manual placing down because... I don't, oh my God, the amount of time, how long it takes to do these things. It's insane. And I was going to give up and just say, you know what, I'm not going to do anything. What's the point? Just waste your life soldering. So I decided to use the Wemos module on it. But the problem with the Wemos module, when you start doing that, you're talking about then a multi-layer sandwich board. It makes debugging a nightmare. And absolutely, uh, oh my God. I'm not going to go through that saga of these before, you know, like what happened through the pandemic and the parts thing and then the fake parts, because that is bringing back nightmares for me. So much wasted bomb. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds wasted. But that's my lesson learned, is that in the future, I don't think I'm going to use the module anymore because it seems, it's like a false economy. It's like going to save you the soldering, but the debugging time is just insane when you were starting getting those things because you can't desolder it. You can't separate this thing. But anyway, let's um, let's just let's move on for that. Um, yeah, Electron Ash. Oh, I okay. I'm gonna just have one more rant before I continue and finish this. Right, Electron Ash, and this is something that is crazy. Um, let's do it this way again. Boom, because we're not working on the the drawing. Um, you need to understand this if you're thinking about electronics in that how much time it takes to put stuff together unless you're going to get them made in China. So that's fine. I do like complicated things. I negotiated to have these made, right? So the um, inspiration engine, which I need to jump back on. I've got a new design for this one, by the way. Sneaky peeky, new design has a screen like this and a joypad as well. Mm, mm, bang. Um, it takes it takes weeks. It takes weeks even just to negotiate these because you're, you're offsetting all of that effort of sourcing all of the parts and choosing them and getting all of that to a third party. It's a nightmare. If you're making thousand of them, great. If you're making five, nightmare. It's, you've got to suck it up. Somebody has to like suck up that effort. And it's it, um, Electron Ash, the same thing. And if you get JL, uh, JLC or PCB way, again, you're not really entirely sure where their parts are. So if they make a whole bunch of them and they don't work, it's just even worse. We've all been there. Right. Uh, but the thing I wanted to tell you about, the latest thing I've made, I've made it through hole because I thought it'd be more retro, like people would like that. You know, through hole they can work on it, understand how it works a little bit. Um, I had not appreciated how long it takes to solder through hole stuff anymore. It That is a nightmare. It just, that takes even longer, right? Because you have to bend all the legs on the resistors and mess around with it. Woof. So involved. Anyway, let's not go into that because we're going to make this and finish this off. Finally, finally. Um, oh, Electron Ash, that's the worst thing. They get a whole load made, right? I've got, I've got so many coasters. Oh, if anyone's interested, I have a linear power supply that um, you can buy where I chop off a third 
I chop off a third of an existing board, which is, I've already up versioned that board and the old ones are coasters. But if I chop off a third of the board, you can fit all the power supply components and get yourself a nice linear power supply board ready to go with full wave projector fire. <laughs> so that's really kind of cool. So I'm at least trying to make some use out of that. Okay, what else does this need? As Oh, we did the dead base port. We got totally sidetracked there. Jeez. Right, so we're going to need a cylinder. We're going to put it... I don't know... Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Okay. Uh, something beautiful will grow In a brave new world With just a handful of men <clears throat> We'll start all over again Look at that hole. Mm. Ah, oh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec, you damn dirty apes. Check this out. Mmm. I got a plan. I got a plan. I'm a man with a plan. The plan involves spam. This is going to be some good beans. These are the real Heinz baked beans. I've got something. This this you will not have seen before or witness ever again. Shit, how big did I make that other one? Was it 30 mil we went for? Yeah, sounds like 30 mil. Hang on. For our base reflex port. Yeah, 30 mil. Okay, watch this. Aswad played in Arlo. Oh, my aunt used to live in Arlo. I used to spend a lot of time in Arlo. Right. Now, we want to keep this as a new component. Hang on, let's just... Ooh. <laughs> Don't do that again. Ah. Ooh. Right, 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 right. I need, I need to do something. Okay. All right. So we make it as a new component. Okay. There's a few steps. I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm playing 3D chess. He's thinking two moves ahead. Or a million. So I want to keep the tool. So we got a hole, right? You see that? We're going to make a hole, but we're keeping the tool, right? Boom. Because we want to do something with the tool. Hmm. Yes, we do. He's got a plan. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be great. Do you remember that advert? With that bloody annoying kid on it? It's going to be great. Great. All right, it's going to be great, mate. It's really great. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> Let's focus. Oh, no. Oh, oh, what? I think I'm scuppered by my own petard. Oh, hang on. Mm -hmm. His brain's working. All right, let me show you what I was going to do. And then we decide... Bollocks. Then we decide if I do it. What I was going to do, you see, is I was going to put this in so that from the back you've got a hole, yeah? But from the inside you've got that tubey bit that goes up through the middle. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And if we want, if we decide it's worth doing, I'll move it. And I don't, I, I'm going to see if we can move it on the timeline because it's in the wrong place for what I kind of intended. So if that's 30, 28, 2 millimeter sidewall? Yeah. Right, what I wanted to do... I want it to shine. No, no, no. We're not going to uh, do that again. Look at that. Right? I wanted to do that. You know where you got... they got like a little pipe inside them, right? I don't know what it's called. It's called like the techno pipe. But they definitely have that little techno pipe in there. Not, I don't know what I've done there. I've somehow cocked up a techno pipe. But that's fine. I can fix the techno pipe. The techno pipe. I think I've reduced my techno pipe diameter by two millimeters but that's fine too because we don't really know what it does and we don't know if it's going to make any difference but look there's the techno pipe fitting we we're going to we we're going to radius that anyway so do you see what i mean that's the um oh sorry i didn't look at the chat for ages let's see what's going on i just want to know if anybody knows what's going on with that part um oh my gosh i can't even read up howard howard you there howard Mark's got an ESP M5 stack. What's an M5 stack? I want that ESP32 M5 stack. By the way, 
Um, those of you waiting for the new generation of Inspiration Engine, I'm going for the way bigger ESP. I need, I needed the um, the extra serial uh, RAM, the Spy RAM in it, and by the time I added all those external components, it was way cheaper just to get the bigger module. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so, um, Howard, the question I've got is, right, do we, do you want this? Is this thing worth having? And if it is, I'm going to have to move it up because it's going to hit the back of the speaker right now. So I'm going to check, maybe. I like to move it, move it. Sometimes, oh, where is it? That's the, that's the cylinder there, basically. I don't know what we can do with it. You can you can edit this feature. I don't know if we can move this. No. Unless we go back in time, like literally go back on the timeline to there. So that's before we did it. That's after we did it. So let's see what happens. I think we have to rewrite time beyond this part. It's like we are like some sort of time ghost. I think we can move that. See, that's that that will give us the clearance we want if we do it that way. If we click OK... I don't know. Let's see if we can forward back in time. <gasps> sort of. Badly. Um, because we made another cylinder. I think let's take it from here. That's pretty cool though. I think we've we've got what we want there. So we'll make a, a hole in it and we'll do um, what Howard said was that was dubious engineering said and we're going to round off his lovely hole. Round off your lovely hole. Do we want it two mil? I think we do. I think we should type it. <laughs> Don't mess it up. Uh, I think we should go to this view again. We're done there. Bang. Let's round off the hole. Oh, I did that again. Look. I'm, I don't know how I'm doing that. Doesn't matter. We'll fix it. If we can select it, if it can, if it can be selected, it can be fixed. Bring them out, bring them out, hear them up, moving them up. Well, had. Let's do the goatsy hole. That's not what we want. Check the bottom out. Let's check the bottom out. Oh, it's an internal hole. We're getting the rolling ball in the wrong place. So what we need to do, combine. Bang and bang. Let's join these guys. So to become one. Oh, it's not doing it for me. Maybe we need to do the outer goatsy hole. Oh, you piece of plum pudding. Why are you, why are you disobeying me here? Mm -hmm. Your niece's shoelace got stuck in the escalator. Hamleys. What? I love Hamleys. Hamleys is definitely the place to go for all the toys. Now, why can't I bloody do this? What? Holy smokes. This is blowing my mind. Hang on. Look at that. So freaky. That is super freaky. Did I keep the tools? Hang on. I kept the tool bodies for some of these things that we don't want. Let's just let's let's just clear that off. I don't know if that's part of our time timeline thing. Anyway, I think it's good enough. Howard, is it good enough or do we need to really goatsy up that hole on the back and round it off? I think it's okay. I don't think I'm worried that the sound waves are going to escape. Costado, how's your leg by the way? Are you walking again? Can we call you names yet, or are you not over it? Rude names. Okay, I'm going to give it one last chance in case I wasn't combining the right things. Combine that to that. I'm pretty sure it didn't do it. I don't have... I don't have... Uh, I don't know. Let's just do a little internal goatsy hole and be done with it. I think that's... Oh, well, that's actually probably it. That's what we want. It's got a little lip on it, but I don't think the 3D printer's going to care. It's going to be within torrents. Now, do we need to round the top off? I think it's okay. From a 3D printing standpoint, that's going to be good. Chuffage. You can always call you names. Uh, hop along. Um, 
that's all I got. <laughs> okay, so we're going to save this as V2. So the one last thing, um, I'm almost tempted to put a, a thing in my in the back, you know, for where you can put a label. But because we're going to be printing it from the back side up, a lot of these features are going to be a pain in the Korok seeds because even this will have to have infill. So I'm not going to put a badge. You know, the badge, you always put a badge and it says like 10 amps, 4 ohms, 16 ounces, and you're done. Now, last piece now, we're nearly there. The last piece to print, of course, would be the frame to hold the piece of tights. Um, uh, Electron Ash, I don't know if you saw that part of the video, but yes, we, we allowed an additional millimeter all around. So it means it's almost certainly will not fit, but we're going to try that out. You know why? I'm actually just looking at this too. We've actually got, there's a, there is a little um, feature here that will probably bite. Or it might not. You know, it's, it's all I bought. You know what you can do sometimes? You can um, 3D print this up, right? In a quick mode. Try the speaker. If it doesn't fit, you can just go into the STL file and just say print it at, you know, an extra 2% up bigger. <laughs> you can cheat. So I think it's fine. If you're just making it for yourself, you could cheat. I mean, we're not we're not trying to make it to a tight tolerance because we haven't had Bang and Olfson contact me or Quad contact me to say, Andrew, I need you to make us a 3D printed speaker for our high end customers. Please ensure it will fit in exactly a 12 centimeter high hole. Um, and it's magnetic to stick to their radiators. Although I would really think that would be cool if they did. Let's let's sing that. Okay. Um, anyway, meanwhile, back on the ranch, Dr. A is trying to design his frame for the tights. I'm guessing that's going to be a box again. We like boxes. Who doesn't like boxes? I just did a little test box there. I don't know if you saw that. Okay. So... I'd like to move in one millimeter. There you go. Do 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 do. Ah! I want to tell you about something, by the way. I'm going to show. You. Yeah, let's digress again. Uh, oh yeah, I should probably finish what I'm doing here for a sec, though. This operation, just a new component. Um, I've got such a good digression for you. Um. Okay, so let's just do that. Right, okay. Meanwhile, I want to show you something. So I've been having a lot of trouble with this Game Boy thing. There was supposed to be a video for you about this this week. Um, about this, which is the Flash Boy Pro cartridge, which is a copy of the EverDrive, basically. It's an EverDrive copy. And... I basically had an issue with this where the buttons, because this is a Retro 6 case, but look at the buttons. I'm waiting for new buttons to come from a different vendor. It's the rubber membranes. Do you see the buttons are sticking? And the original, look. See that? I'm not making it up. It's definitely doing it. You can see it's just a genuine case, the USB-C, all of that stuff. And that's driving me so nuts that I can't, I can't even begin myself to do a review on this. In fact, the videos I started filming it turned into a rant, like a real, real um, mega rant about it. I was getting so frustrated and saying, why the F in F um, doesn't this fit? Why are the silicone buttons so terrible? And it was driving me nuts. Anyway, that aside, I want to show you something um, on this, and I'm hoping it can focus on it. This game is a game that I absolutely adore. And this cartridge, it's got, an, I think, an 8 gigabyte uh, SD ROM on it, SD uh, micro SD card, and it's got, it's full of all the Game Boy games. Like the entire library came with it, which is pretty cool. And I found on it Bubble Ghost, which I absolutely like. I don't know if you've played Bubble Ghost, right? But you're this ghost guy, and you basically have to get, it's like thrust, sort of. You've got to get, you're, you're pushing a button to blow, and you're puffing it to get to the end of the map. And the thing about Bubble Ghost, what's cool, it's got things like candles and other obstacles. A bit like the Incredible Machine, and then you have to go running around and flicking switches and blowing out candles and doing all that. It's really hard to play in reverse, by the way. Um, but yeah, if you haven't tried it, check out Bubble Ghost. I love it. Oh, it's on the ST! 
Oh, man. Floating Fat Man. I'm not going to talk to Elliot about the GB. You know why? Because the the bloody donor for this came from Elliot, which I really like. I've got two donor PC CPU boards, right? So I had to buy absolutely everything else. Screen, case, buttons, rubber membranes, battery system, everything to even get these things working. So Elliot's cost me about bloody 150 quid to make a Game Boy. And it's still not, satis still not satisfying me. Um, but no, I, 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 I should ask him if he has some original spare uh, membranes. That's that's true. But I'm going to try some of these other other market ones. These ones were black colored. I think they're like color coded. I don't think it's the right material necessarily. I think I'm going for ones which just look like no the more natural colored Game Boy ones because I kind of think it's just mix. It's the, the chemical mix is not right somehow. And I don't really want to get into it too much because it was wasting too much of my time getting annoyed by it right so that is a good frame hole i think we'll all agree that should fit nicely there's it's a really tight tolerance by the way because it's uh, i i no it's not really tight i allowed a millimeter all around so don't use stocking material that's more than half a millimeter thick which would be probably quite um fat mm. right I know we're going to have to take out another square out of the middle because we want this just to be a frame to stretch over. Oh, is Howard still here? Howard, what's the what's the speaker material? Can we get hold of speaker material? But what I want to do on these outer faces, I don't want this to be this hard edge. So I'm just going to knock down that hard edge again. We're going to do it all the way around. All the way around. Nice and easy. Look at that. Look at that. We got it. I'm just going to go, ooh, ooh. Do you have dove there? Do you have a dove there? Dove there. Right. <laughs> Let's not worry about the dove there right now. No, mate, it's not a dove there. You mean David, don't you? Don't you? Right. Let's, let's go here. Oh. Not extrude, you piece of bollock. Right. Box. For those about to box, we salute your membrane keypad. Okay, let's bring this 4 mil in from the edge. I think a 4 mil thick frame is insane in your membrane. He's insane. He's got no brain. Can you imagine that? Not having a brain. Okay. Actually, I think I can imagine that. I think in some respects, I am living embodiment of a brainless person. Right, look at that. That is a frame. That frame is good. Okay. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, you bastards. You just got me singing to the screen. I'm working on my frame. My God. <laughs> Acoustically transparent burlap. That is that was a bit embarrassing. Okay. So we do have two things to print. I'm wondering if we could combine this somehow. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not going to combine it, but I'll tell you what's the process to combine it. Uh, Fusion 360 does have cam in it. That's computer-aided machinery for those intellectually incompetent enough to figure that out. Sorry, I don't mean to be insulting, but you didn't tell me to switch my camera. Um, and what you could do technically, you know, if you imagine you're, you're printing using additive manufacturing, you have to squirt the juice out from the bottom and you're, you're bringing your excellent juice all the way up to the top. Um, you sometimes use a slicer program to add that support material for you and it always gets it wrong and it's a bit horrible but technically you could bring this in as um a model you, you could fit this so that the bezel is hovering just above that and you're actually adding your own support in the cam or even in your cad so you could print it as a one-off thing and then you just slide a, a stanley knife down it and it would release ah oh, we've forgotten something Oh, shh. it might be too late. It might be too late, guys. It, no, it won't. I got it. I got this. We didn't allow a recess for the gr for the whole grill membrane junk. You'll see what I mean. Don't worry. 
Oh. Hang on. All right. Okay. We got a problem here. We're going to do it right. Um, PP Hammer. i got to try that. I've got a PP Hammer. It sounds a bit rude. I've got a PP Hammer. Now, look. I've, I've, I, it's really hard to show you how I've cocked up. So I'm going to just do stuff. I'm going to move this frame over here because I like, I want to put it side by side actually when we export it. But what I want to show you is the bit I've forgotten, like a noob, you see here, this curve goes to the top of the frame and then it has the recess for the speaker. But we need a recess here so that your, your oh, hang on. I was going to say so your grill fits into it, but I'm looking. I've got some speakers here and the grill sits on top. Now I don't know if I need to do that. Look, I'll show you. Look, this one, just to show you. Um, this speaker frame. So this is the frame that we've made. We've made basically a frame like this. Although this has got pegs to hold it in place. Um, the speaker itself is totally flat and the cones actually just sit on the outer edge of the speaker and the grill just pushes in. So what I'm proposing to do, you see, is to try to rebrate it so this whole grill actually just fits in but yeah it does fit on top and i've got the um the bigger brother of these quad speakers in the living room which are magnetic and that just definitely just sits on top so i think i'm overthunking it i think i'm overthinking it i'm gonna pop this grill on uh, like that i think we're okay i think it's it's gonna be okay it does mean when we come to make this we're gonna have to work out how to sit it on top but I think a little bit of sticky, 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 Vicky. Okay, that's something we could do. Let's undo. Bang, so it's on top. Let's do one last thing then. I think if in this frame, we can include a feature. I kind of wish I didn't delete something on it. He's thinking. Um, how do we go back a second? Right. I think we got to do something with this box. He's living in a box. He's a living in a cardboard box. He's a living in a box. He's a living in a cardboardy boxy. There we go. Do you see what I've done there? Do you see what I've done there, guys? So now we've got more meat, so we can put something in the corners when we actually come to do this. And ah, oh, uh, right. I'm just trying something out. No. Oh, the sketch has moved reference point. Oh, we really cocked up this drawing, by the way. If we sent this out to somebody to rework, they would kill us. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, Castardo. I'm thinking... <clears throat> what's going on here? Hang on. I'm thinking we should go back in time again. I think we should just do that. And give the cloth plenty of meat. So you can just wrap it round and glue it and staple it. I don't think... Is that wonk? Why does it look so wonk? I don't think that the wind hole... Why it's... <laughs> Hang on. i got to do this manually. 63? No. No, 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 no. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, as I was saying, I don't think that the wind hole is that um, critical on this small little speaker. Why? Watch this. I'm moving that and it says 65 and I'm like, no, I don't want it to be 65. I want it to be 63. Why is it taking the right edge in? Are you messing with me? Are you funning me, boy? Anyway, that's it. That's 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 fine. I'd be happy with that. It's 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 happy with it. I'm happy with it. I think that's okay. I think it looks less wonky now. Hopefully, um, I kind of want to radius this now. Mm. Oh, oh, look at that. Seven and a half mil. I think it's a bit deep. I think a, oh, I think a five mil is fine. But oh, even a four. A seven. A seven would be way too exotic. Yeah, a four. Let's um let's get them all fought up. D 
don't phone in. It's just for fun. Can I select that? Oh, look at that vertex selection through the plane. Mmm. He's clicking it as if it's nothing there. Getting his four millimeters. Let's check that out from the top. Um. Oh, Electron, don't wind me up. No, I don't think it is slightly offset. Check it out now. I'm going to hold it there for a minute. I say a minute. Um, there you go. I realised I was not streaming with the chat enabled now, and you didn't tell me of that happening, guys. Too. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just delete that. Why? Uh, I'll do it later. I'm going to delete these stupid profiles in my OBS. That are mainly wrong. Um... Do we want to fit the feature to allow it to go through like little holes? ZX Renew, I think it's alright now, but there could be a lag in the streaming. I think it's more or less enough. Do you know what I mean? For, for, for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, I honestly think... As much as I like the idea of having a... Oh, you're always making me do more work. It needs to have those pegs, doesn't it? It friggin' needs it. You're making me, you're making me, you're guilting me into doing it. <laughs> Peg tooth, don't you bloody start. It's fine. It's absolutely bloody fine. Anyway. Um, I'm just going to see it. I can't find a part number. These speakers were from CPC. I can tell because it came in a CPC box. Let me see if I can get your part number. Because I'm going to make this this available. This design. Let me get your part number. It is called... It, okay, are you ready? <clears throat> it's the LS03185. Someone type this into chat. Into chat, please type in the CPC part number that's coming up in a one, a two, a three. Oh, I should be counting down. Anyway, oh, Sad Ken, you got there before me. An LS03185. You already did it. If someone can bring that up on Google and confirm it looks like this on CPC, then at least someone, me, I'm just. I'm going to type it into the. Um, can I edit the description? I'm going to put it into the description as well. L S O three one eight five C P C. Uh, sorry, speaker from C P C. Boom. Documentation. That's what you want. Evening, Jonathan. How are you? Are you interested in making a speaker? Are you interested in trying to do three D printing? If you are, you've come to the wrong place. This is the place where designs go to weep. Okay. So, what do we need to create now? We need to create pegs and holes. So we're going to be doing some pegging. I believe that's the correct terminology. So I reckon... I like the pegs on the reset button of the retro net. So if you haven't bought one, why haven't you bought one? Mm, 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 four millimeters. Four millimeters sounds pretty swell to me. Let's see what plane we have put this in because it might be something crazy and mental. Oh, oh, dunder. Look at that. Look at that peg depth. He's got the depth, he's got the breadth. I think he needs a 15 mil peg. If you're going to do some pegging, you want the 15. In fact, it's not even 15 because it's eating. It's biting a big 2mm shit donut before it even gets to 15. So we need to put it more like 18. Is 15 too big? It looks big on the screen, but it's tiny in reality. So I think it's okay. Um, <laughs> Electron Ash. I don't know what you mean. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to do that. Bugger. Oh, look, you can go back in time, new body. Boom. Ah. I was getting quite perturbed by that possibility of doing it wrong. But now it's done right. It's 
bit of excitement there for you. Yeah, but ah, uh, yeah, I suppose control control Z though. Sometimes in CAD software, it doesn't do what you get, you think it's you, you'd expect it to do, and it's not the first time. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! It's not my first rodeo. People say that, don't they? But I have to admit, I've only been to one rodeo, and that was my first and only experience of a rodeo. Uh, we're going to go around the centre point of the thing. We're going to go around the centre point of the thing. There is the opportunity here, because I haven't measured it, that the speaker might not go in upside down. <laughs> so when you fit your, your material, before you apply your fancy label, make sure it's uh, done the right way up. Oh, yes. It would have been nice if I rounded the ends of these friggin' things first, but I can do that now, don't you worry. Don't you worry about it. I know you were panicking at home, not shouting at the screen, not telling me I'm making mistakes. Um, did I select the right ones? Yes, you did. Can we fix it? Yes, we can! Mm, ooh, 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 hello. Mm, so domified. That, that is a fine looking peg. <laughs> okay. Right, guys, we're getting there. We're almost there. I think we're almost to a point where we could make something that we could actually print. But I'm going to do the full... What? Where's that little circle? Oh, that's the tip. Just put the tip in. Just put the tip in. Do-do-do-do. Delicious ice cream from Italy. What size peg? I feel I would do four and a half normally, but I'm almost thinking five hole. No, that's too big. Four and a half. Do do. Because 3D printing is really wank socks. Okay. Yes. Mm, mm, look at that penetration. We want a new body though. We're keeping it as a new tool, but let's get, let's do it. We're going to still penetrate it to the correct depth. If you're going to do it, you've got to do it right. So that is basically reference to the front face, 23 millimeters. So we want to add mm, 15. So we want to do minus 37. Mm, and then we're going to add fuck it, two millimeters more <laughs> for good measure, 39. That's going to be our tolerance. Eh? That's what we call it in the industry. How do we select the prior item? So what we're going to do, we're going to do move again. I'm just going to hopefully move the right. Oh, did that select the right one or the wrong one? We'll find out. I don't want any more Simon peggings. Simon is a pegging. That is beautiful. Oh, my word, is that beautiful. That is basically the woman who plays Wonder Woman level of beauty. Gal Gil Go Gado. Gil Gada Go Go. Okay. Just making sounds at this point. Let's get that dragged down. Oh, five millimeter. <laughs> Floating Fat Man, I agree. Ah, oh, you're not going to do the pegs. No, you got to do the pegs. Um, Floating Fat Man, I think they're okay because it's only for insertion. They'd snap off if you're inserting and deserting. <laughs> deserting. <laughs> Deserting. Mmm. Mmm. Custard. <laughs> okay. Right. <sighs> okay. Stop it. Stop it. You're killing me. Okay. We need to do this and combine. Castardo, that's the option though, isn't it? Really, if you want to do the magnets, you can cut stuff off. Um, the problem is, remember, this is tiny. This is teeny, teeny, tiny. But yeah, magnets is also a really good option. I think magnets is a great option too. Tool body, bang, 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 bang. Oh no, I selected the wrong thing. Sillet, bang. I hope I've selected all the right ones. Uh, we'll know soon enough. Yeah. Oh! I'm such a I'm such an idiot. 
Before we do that. Oh, do you see how long it took to uncancel? It didn't even do the operation. Right, before we do that, we need to just move this guy out of the way or hide it. So let's just select it. Because I don't know what it is. I don't know what you... I'm looking at this thing on the left, basically, and I still can't find it. Where is it? It's not that. Those are the Simon Peggs. Um, it's one of these bodies. Which body are you? Where is it? Hang on a minute. Doesn't it? Maybe it doesn't exist. I don't think it re exists in our reality. See how these bodies are being selected? Sod it. Don't worry about that. You can just do this. Select this and we're going to whiffle it up. Oh, it's not even connected to the pegs. Fuck sticks. <laughs> Uh... Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Don't worry, we'll figure this out. <sighs> this is when we're saying that thing about always label your stuff as you go along, and then you don't, and then you come into all manner of mischief, right? So, can't I label that because it's a component? Do I have to label it sub-bodies? What? Oh, what have I done here? Pat! Pat, what have you done? Oh, man. This has made it complicated. It's the problem with CAD. It's just designed to screw you over. Right, so I want... That body is fine. That's peg one. But where the heck... Is the peg two gone? Okay, so body 17, 18, no. Oh, my word. One, two, three. It's not even showing up as a thing. Bollocks. Frank! What have I done? I've, I've screwed something so hard. Hmm. Okay, let's float this up. We need to locate all of our pegs now, individually. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be those pegs. Okay. And I think this component... Oh, my word. Shit. That's all over the place. I don't know if you saw that, but everything is basically all over the place in that hierarchy. I don't know what we did. We referenced some. We made a bad reference, basically, and we're going to suffer for it. So that's fine. What, so what we do is we're going to select this now um, and float it out of the way, and we're going to join all of the other pieces that were supposed to be on it up to it. Oh, okay, just piss that off up there. Let's just check. I thought all of the things we've hidden have come back. Fine. We're getting good at this now. We need Sad Ken and his amazing CAD skills to actually do this right. I've pooched it. Yeah, it's all right. We're nearly done now, thank God. I'm almost at the stage where I'm just loading up Cura because I think we're that close. Oh, assholes. There's some weird UI elements, by the way, that just seem to bite you every now and then like that, but that's okay. There's definitely worse things in life. I'm going to bring that back up. And we've got one more to do. What time is it anyway? Oh, it's late. It's bedtime. Uh, Yeah, you could radius the bottom of the ellipse, I suppose. I think I will, actually. I needed that clearance. Good, good suggestion there. Right. Now, before I forget, I'm just going to join all of these things because its I don't want that ever happening again to anybody on this planet that that effort has to go through again. So don't keep the tools. Join. Bang. Right. Now they're a real thing. So let's turn on these guys. Let's get rid of these bastards now. It was getting serious there for a minute. Right. Bang. Bang, in the hole, in the hole. Want to do a cut. Bosh. Did I keep the tool? No, 
Good. Now we're cleaning up this timeline. You probably could sleep soon, Plain Fat Man, but you might as well now wait. We're almost done. Um, oh, yeah. That's not bad, you know. I, oh, stop. I was worried. Let's look at that. Hang on. Is it doing anything? I'm I'm not happy with what's happening here. Hang on. Replying Philip to this radius. It's not really doing it, you know, and I don't know why. It can I can't do it. It doesn't like that. That is not something it's happy to do. Maybe it's because it's come a, from a a um a sketch. Um, floating fat man. Yeah, the family board. I've ordered. I've ordered them. The information will come when I've done the final debugulating. Right. Are we all happy? You know, because we need to go to bed. I think that's pretty much what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna. Bring up Cura, because that takes time to load. And then I'm going to run an export on this job. Because frankly, my dear, I've got all of the no more Fs to give about this project. Right. <laughs> let's see. That is all body one. So let's... It's important we notice that. So this is the grill. Bezel. We'll call it the bezel, right? That's the bezel. And this... Oh, what? Where is that? Where is the speaker actual body in our bloody timeline? Because what I need to do is to export this, I have to hide certain things. Can I select using this? Hmm. What if I just combine it all? Join everything. No, that's really bad. Don't do that. Now, okay. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. That that we know is the bezel. It's like it doesn't exist in any plane of existence. I'm not going to be able to export the damn tool. <laughs> how do I do this, I Ken? Tell me, how do I do this? Oh, it's so close. Do I just reset the whole software because it's gone clearly gone tonto? Maybe I have to delete these things from the timeline that don't no longer exist. Right, let's try that. Sometimes it does get confused, to be fair. So that's the bezel. The problem is I can't export it. The reason is it won't fit on my printer bed. Otherwise, I just put them side by side and say that's good enough for me. But I don't know. Ah, hang on. Do you see? Oh, it's some features here. Look what it's hiding there. All right, I'm going to just take the risk, do that thing I said I didn't want to do, but I'm going to do it. Let's just, because I just want to export this and try to combine it all into the same shape. Uh, oh, you've got to select the individual target things. Crap hole. Join them with a bodge wire. Hmm. I think you could be right, you know. Well, let's let's just hide the bezel for now. Okay. Let's do an export. I'm going to save it as a STL file. Because the reason is it takes time anyway for that. It has to set up, uh, let's see, does it show it? It'll pop up with it. It sets up a, a job, basically. So that's that's running on a, a cloud now. So we can move that out of the way while we figure this out. So I 
I'm trying to think, why well, can't I even see the bezel now? Okay, there it is. If I can select this, maybe I can just hide this whole thing, but I'm not sure what it is to hide. Can I hide everything but... So if we did that... Look, it's weird how it just still exists slightly. Right, so if we just turn off enough stuff... Ah! We found it, finally. Is that it? It's somewhere in here. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. Ah, oh, phew. Okay, here we go. Speaker body. Right, so we can turn off speaker body now. And we can run the export. You could you could place the shape um, back to the origin. But I wouldn't advise it. Well, it's not worth doing because you can easily do it in your slicer. So let's just do that. Export the STL file for bezel. And I love that file name I've chosen for the other thing. V1, V2. And now is a really good time if you wanted to ask any questions because that will actually take a little bit of time. I'm going to put that in the window so I can keep an eye on it. It will take a little bit of time. But yeah, feel free to ask me questions. I'll tell you no lies. Do, do, do. Look, I've got the little progress bar floating above my head. Is there anybody still there? Are we sleeping? Can I show you anything in this box? Let's see what else is in the box then. Mm. Okay, I'm going to try to do this again. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so what else? We have that smaller speaker. We have a really cheap and nasty pair of in-ear headphones. We have some really quite, they were cheap, but they're not nasty. I have three pairs of them. That's how much I rated these. These are really cool. These are like earplugs. Yes, they're really cool. If you're riding a motorbike, you can put them in. They're a little bit like ear defenders, but they're actually speakers. You can see they've got their micro uh, headphones and they've got actually a microphone and a button on the cord too. But I don't think they're going to work because I don't know if my phone even has a hole in it anymore. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So maybe that's useless tech. I bought a lot of them and clearly useless. Um, I once bought a thing from China and it came with this, which is pretty cool. It looks invisible there, look. But it's a green PCB with this little uh, little thing hanging off it, which is pretty nice, neat. It does. You can see. Oh, oh, you can't see the exporting thing right now. Yeah, it's still going. Um... There we go. Look, you can see it's still actually going. The export takes ages. And what I think they're doing is it's not because it, it takes ages. It's because I think your the speed of your export depends on how much money you pay in your subscription. I think they're um, basically saying if you want a higher priority job, you have to pay more. Now, I absolutely love these. These are some headphones that I bought a few years ago. At, I think it was CES. It was CES in Vegas. And they were just shutting up shops, so I just threw them some dollars and they just gave me like a handful of these I had like five of them and they are green so they're invisible but yeah they're just Bluetooth um, simple Bluetooth uh, in-ear things but they've got this really cool feature that means they just hook onto your ear and I'll just show you that if you've got odd ears I actually really hate hate them normally right because they don't stay in but look these ones actually do because it doesn't rely on uh, an interference fit of your ear hole. It actually just fits into your, uh, you know, whatever that part of your ear is. So, Mr. Agony, I don't know. This isn't a free one. This is the actual full fat as well. This is a paid for one. So these are really good. And actually, if you're in the market, I've got them here charging. They're charged. Cool. I really like these. These are, are what are they called? Uh, Trex Titanium, something like that. Trex Titanium, these are bone conducting ones, right? Check this out. They fit on your head like Mr. Su Mr. Sulu. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like a reverse Geordie LaForge. Yeah, so they fit like a reverse Geordie LaForge. They fit like that thing in Star Trek. Do you remember there was like that game they were playing with the three rings and they're all like going into zombies? It's a bit like that. And it lets your ear hole be available. So you can still hear sound through that, but it actually literally conducts it through your skin of your face. Yeah, um, which works really well. So you can use that for running. They're the only ones approved for running. One job's complete, by the way. Um, 
and it's crazy. And they come with actual earplugs. So if you do want to have like the full noise cancelled experience, you can just put earplugs in um, and still listen to your music. So these are actually a really freaky technology, but I, I recommend them. They are really good, especially if you're not, you don't like the headphones that sit in your ear. Admittedly, the music quality isn't perfect, but the newer ones have a much bigger dynamic range than mine. But they're like waterproof and just totally um, integrated with all the modern Bluetooth standards for your phone. Really good. Anyway, enough of that. Let's see what design actually finished doing its business. Oh, no, that's cool. It's the V1, V2. So let's... Um, show in file explorer so that's shown in file i'm going to rename that i'm going to um to call it a speaker i'm going to paste these by the way in discord right now so if you want to have a go at printing them you can oh look at that he's a big boy holy schmoly that's taken up all my base so I have got two printers, so I can, um, let's see how long it would take to print. I can print the bezel on one and the thing on the other, but don't worry, I'm definitely not going to be doing that in the stream because that's just OTT. So I'm going to paste that now in uh, the 3D printing room on the Discord. Let's, where's, where the heck is that gone? 3D printing, here we go. So uh, speaker.stl is going in there. Next to Baby Yoda. Come on, Mr. Bezel. I want to get the bezel done, so I want to see how it looks in Cura. Why? Chess, is that a rude thing? Google blocked what you you said. I have to un unblock it. You prefer your ears? You know, I think so. But, you know, I think really like the best for noise cancelling. Definitely the Bose ones. The Bose. Um, but... I always have the wired pair because when I'm traveling on an aeroplane, I want the um, the wires because I want to plug into the sound of the seat. Right, let's pop the bezel on here now. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh. Oh. Doesn't like that. But it's natural that it doesn't like it, of course, because think about it. How would you even uh, be able to print that? Let's see what happens if you try to move this onto the build bed. So we're going to say, it's like it's saying no because it's hovering it. Let's do something crazy. I've always wanted this. If you have this floating above it, would it try to print it if you add support? Oh, no. It's saying no. I refuse to allow this. All right, let's delete it. Because you could actually merge those in the print if you want to. That's, that's what it's allowing you to do. But let's slice this component. Let's see how long it would take. <laughs> yeah, it is butter coloured, isn't it? Oh my word! Okay, I can't see the streaming window to see if you can see the number. I don't think you can, so I'm going to minimise that. Um, it's blocked by my head. Any guesses as to how long this thing is going to take to print? Ah, oh. a heart rate sensor for your ears. I prefer the watch. Mr. Agni, did you see that? It is eight hours. You've got it. You didn't put it into your cura. <laughs> no, it's eight hours. That. Oh, my God. So you're talking 16 hours just to get that going. Okay. Maybe we could change some of the parameters here and the density. Uh but you want it dense, right? I think speakers are supposed to be really dense. But anyway, fine. The Bezwell. So you definitely don't want to print it like that. If you're going to print it, do not print it on the pegs. Because you can print it upside down. This is something you don't see. And even if the edges are a little bit rough... <laughs> yeah, print it like that. Even if the edges are a little bit rough, you can just run a deburring tool over them because... Oh, my word. Come on. I think, can it, if I hit a range, will it do it? No. All right, that's what we want. Okay. Cure is a little bit clunky, but it's, it's a good tool. Uh, yeah. Oh, I tell you what, I've got headphones, Bluetooths, and bags. 
If you travel a lot, you just accrue so many different types of Bluetooth headphones. I've got like the Sony in-ear, I've got those ones on the rope that I showed you, on-ear things, I've got two set of Bose QCs, um, so another Sony headset, I've got loads, loads of Sony Bluetooth headsets because I really like them, they're, really, they're almost like the modern version of the old ones that came with the Walkman but Bluetooth and they've got two endpoints on them which means you can connect to your laptop on your phone once. And then travel bags, I must have at least five or six different luggages. And the problem is, the reason why you end up with all of that is because nothing ever really works. You're always looking for the perfect companion, the perfect headset and the perfect bag. There's, there's only three things that re revolve your, your life when, you're, when you travel for business a lot. Your phone, your bag and your headset. That's really it. And I think, I think though this might be the... The, like the best general purpose tool if there's only one to take with you it's take this because uh you okay you're not going to get the joy on the airplane if you're listening to the thing but if it's short haul in europe you're only there for a few hours there's no tvs on the plane you can just pop this on put in your ear things and dick around on your netflix on your phone and then when you're taking your calls you, then that does the that does the job um no my it's not got the orange it's I'm talking the one the ones I've got look like the bit like the ones with the orange ear cushions but they're black you know they're modern version okay right um good so I don't know what do you want to do are we done do you want um call me cock in the chat and I'll just unlock it every time you call me cock do you want to have a go at um, 3D printing this? I'm going to write that in the Discord. Someone print this. The speaker is... What was that speaker number again? Oh, no. Is CPC L... Uh, CPC or the... CPC LS03 LSO... Oh. By the way, I need a, I need to ask you something. LS3185. Right. I need to ask you something. Serious. Serious time. Super serious. Super serious. Super serious. Not really super serious. But yes, thank you guys for the LS thing. I've typed that in. Okay. <clears throat> you potato. You fucking potato. Right. Um, a while ago, you might remember this. This is the low noise amplifier I soldered a USB port onto, yeah? As part of a review, and it was really good. It was like a... Ch yeah, I did ZX Renew. It does have holes. It does have holes in pa for power cables. And um, this thing worked great, to be honest with you. It was like three quid. Um, it worked great. Now, another company um, called GPIO Labs have sent me their version right which is quite a lot more expensive um but effectively the same kind of thing i'm just even seeing if if you hold them up you know what they actually if you hold them up like that although the size is different the inputs are the same the outputs are the same and where the port or, or the power in this case remember i added the port go the same obviously it's a little bit wee it's a little bit wee smaller now I could lift the cans to see what's under them, but I did I did say I'll I'll give it a go, you know, give it a little review, and I've I've been using it. And it seems fine. It does pretty much the same same stuff because if you think about it, um, the things that live inside the cans are just going to be pretty much a transistor and possibly the same transistor, right? So I could do be a bit mean and open the lid, do a review, show the chip, and see if it's the same one. Um, but if if anybody knows how to um, review or how one might want to review a low noise amplifier to compare and contrast, let me know because it kind of seems to perform kind of thing. Uh, how indescript is that? It performs the same as far as I can tell uh, as well as the other one. So I don't know. Um, it's a micro USB comes on this one which is kind of handy that you don't have to solder that on. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't know if it has a bias uh, T on it or any of that stuff so you can put power up it. I strongly suspect it doesn't. Um, hang on, it does have something on it. <gasps> it could be the game changer. Hang on. Oh, I haven't got the lead set up. Oh, I have, I have. I have. I have my shoe, my shoe. Hang on, you got this. let's try this out. Oh, that's new SP min. This... This one looks like it's got an LED on it. <laughs> Hang on. 
Oh, it does. It does. Look at that. You can see there's the uh, current limiting resistor and an LED on it. Mm, not blinking, just static. But worth the extra tenner. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, why do I say I do these things? I'm too kind, you know. Do you want do you want to try this this thing out? Do a review. Well, I might make it look really bad because I don't know how to test it. And then people slag me off. You get some comments, right? Oh my god, the comments. You should read the comments. Ha, ah, you idiot! You're an idiot! F you, you idiot! Idiot! And I'm like, oh, oh my god. Some teenager in another country, oh, why are you calling me an idiot? It's not good for my self esteem. <laughs> okay, anyway. Good. I think we're coming to the natural, satisfying conclusion, hopefully. The sexually satisfying conclusion of this stream. With a whopping 16 concurrent viewers. With the, there's statistics here. With the average watch time of five minutes each. What does that even mean? That's crazy. 16 viewers with five minutes each. What is the churn rate on something like that? Think about that. Five minutes on a stream that's been going for over two hours. This is why YouTube hates me. I'm actually costing them money at this point. We should just do one of those 24 hour live streams. And in terms of Google Cloud costs, I will have probably uh, cost more to Google than they've ever given me in the lifetime of this channel. We can do this together if we really try hard. Okay, right, I think I'm gonna go. It's been a long day um, and I'd love to stay but I've really got nothing more to do apart from turn on my 3D printers to print this and watch them do that. So I'm gonna go uh, turn this off and go and watch the 60s Batman series because I'm pretty in deep with that. By the way, can I just talk a little bit about the 60s Batman series before I go? Is there anybody interested in the 60s Batman series because it, uh, it has actually interested me um, it's caught my attention way more than it did when I was a kid so I used to watch Batman a lot as a kid and hey nostalgia nerd no I'm gonna stay no you're all saying goodbye but I'm gonna stay now just for a minute because I want to talk about the Batman thing all right so I was given Plex access by a kindly person to their Plex server recently and on their Plex server, it was immaculately categorized. I've never seen anyone categorize a Plex server so beautifully. Split, split up into TV shows, movies, by genre, everything. All the classics. All the classics. Yes, the Adam West Batman. This is where we're talking about. And I went into the TV um, shows, retro TV shows. In fact, why am I... I should just be doing this full screen so you can really just enjoy the full fullness of my face and um basically yeah what 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 it had on there it had all of the shows i remember growing up that i used to watch a lot of so i had voyage to the bottom of the sea land of the giants the time tunnel obviously the a-team and night rider but i'm not even including those because those are so common right i'm talking about the channel four ones like mission impossible um Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, starring Richard Basehart. Mm. Oh, I love that. Love the movie too. Anyway, there was on there the um, Adam West uh, Batman series. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start watching this when my kids are in the room and see their reaction to Batman. Because they like Batman. They're always playing the N64 Batman game. For whatever reason, on the N64 and the entire N64 library, Batman. And it's the weird one, like the cartoon, not the cartoon one that we would have watched, the, the one that came after, right? Batman Beyond. Anyway, I digest. The Adam West Batman. So I put this thing on and I was bloody hooked. I have to tell you, I was bloody hooked. I could not believe what I was seeing on that show, right? I can't remember exactly. Please, someone remind me of the first episode. But it was, I, I don't think it was the Joker... It might have been the... No, the penguin. I'm thinking it was the penguin with the umbrellas. 
Uh, anyway, that was pretty. One of them, right? It's the penguin with the umbrellas, and he's, he he makes all of these crazy umbrellas that when you open them, they explode and fire confetti and and do something. And he was doing all these crazy umbrella-related antics all over Gotham City. And I didn't realise this. Those Batman TV shows were like two-parters. Nearly all of them seem to be a two-parter, which is great. Keeps you on the edge of your seat. Same bat time, same bat channel. And um, what um, uh, what happened with that then? So the Joker was doing this crazy stuff with Batman. Uh, sorry, Penguin. And there's a, there's um, elements of it that are just bizarre. Like he, he fires a, a rope between two buildings and they, they're crossing it. You know, like as if you'd cross on a zip line. But the zip line is a massive brolly and he hooks on the brolly on it and he's going down with his minions on this massive umbrella. And I was just like, this is amazing. I didn't realise. It was so tongue in cheek. It's like a comic. It's like the TV show of the Batman was like the comic. Yeah, and, and and I get that now. But when I was a kid, I thought it was like a serious-ish thing, you know. When you're watching Columbo and Quincy and Batman, I was just like, yeah, I didn't, I never, I didn't catch that nuance. But it was really tongue in cheek. And there's a bit in it because the um, Adam West character is always calling the Dick Grayson, whatever he is. He's always calling, "Come on, let's go fishing, chum." Ch he's calling him chum all the time, right? And I only just got that because when you watch the Tick, the original Tick. Uh, TV show, not the new one, but the the original one. He's always calling his little sidekick chum, and I didn't realise that's just a callback to Batman. It's, it's fantastic. And then all of those characters, uh, nostalgia nerd, you're getting it right, yeah. Oh my god. And all those characters that you see in the movies, right? So you have um, the Penguin, the Riddler, the Joker. You have Mister Freeze, and um, I'm trying to think. There were some really weird characters. Because uh, some of them I, I wasn't paying attention to that when my kids were watching it. Because they, they were just hooked on it. And there's some really... I'm trying to think the weird one. There was one where he was setting up traps and he's like a magician or something. You know, I, I, I believe like... I, I kind of think Poison Ivy's got to be in it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But I'm just guessing Poison Ivy... Oh, Two-Face. So I'm going to look out for Two-Face. Oh, the first episode is the Riddler one. I can't even remember what Riddler was doing with that. But shit, man, there's loads of episodes of that. I, c I can just rewind, go back to, like, wherever it is I was zoning out on and just start catching up on that. Because it was just, it's just, it's just amazing. And uh, I I'm trying to think of some of the other shows that I'm watching because I've got a little rotation right now. So I'm watching something on Amazon. What would that be? I'm thinking sci-fi. Something sci-fi on Amazon. No, because I'm watching on Netflix. I'm watching the Discovery. Right, they've got Discovery on Netflix. Damn it! There's something I'm stick. I'm tuned to on on. Uh, okay, forget the Amazon thing. So I'm not sure about that. But Disney play the Mandalorian. I'm watching the Mandalorian a lot. Yeah, Electron Ash is saying Mando. Mandalorian. Disney Plus. Right. I, I could be just getting my knickers in a twist because if you're on the Amazon Fire Stick, it, it will play stuff even if it, it looks on the Amazon screen. Um, but yeah, uh, the Amazon one. Okay, I, so I, I'm thinking I might be getting confused with the Mandalorian, but I think it is an Amazon thing. Can we? Can you do, do Amazon Fire Stick thing on the the internet? Amazon Prime TV. Maybe we can just see this Prime Video. Let's let's just 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 do this. Yes, yes, yes. You Emma effing Emma effing thing. Look, you can do this. Yes. So, oh, okay, hang on. Are these the things I've been watching? Is it going to be showing something super pervy or something? I'm going to regret this. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Seinfeld. That's it. Oh my god, it wasn't sci-fi related. I've gone back to the beginning and start watching Seinfeld again from episode one. And damn it, I love Seinfeld. I forgot how much I love it, and I forgot how much you know. I really have a, 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 an affection for these characters. But the um, oh, uh, my favourite is George. George Costanza. I think George Costanza carries Seinfeld. He absolutely carries uh, Seinfeld. Yeah, and it's a bit of sci-fi. George Costanza. Oh, but The Boys. The Boys was the previous binge. I, I watched The Boys like up, up to a couple of weeks ago when I finished. That's absolutely fantastic. Gee, if you haven't seen The Boys, watch The Boys. I mean, I... I 
look at this this picture, right? The pictures for it on Amazon are really crap. That's all it shows you, and you never watch it. It's a it's like Ozark. Uh, if you see the picture for Ozark, the thumbnail, you're like ah oh, ah, uh, and then when you're so you're so bored, I just go, what the hell is this Ozark? I did it while I was in business in India, and I just said, oh, let's put on Ozark. Every night while I was there, I was binging on Ozark. I was binging like five episodes. I was going to bed so late and getting up the next morning. I had to like drag myself to those meetings. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, Angie, you look rough. Yeah, yeah, jet lag. It wasn't jet lag. It was Ozark. Oh my God, that was amazing. Ozark is super, super good. Last Man on Earth down here by my head. La oh, that is brilliant. Tandy. <laughs> Tandy. Yeah, I think thumb yeah, nostalgia knows and thumbnails in and my thumbnails are shite. I, I, I honestly think that I honestly think that my YouTube thing is totally proportional. My YouTube promotion is totally proportional to the amount of effort I do not put into my thumbnails. I've got to get onto that. But the problem is I've got so many now, like fourteen hundred videos, I can't go back and change them. But yeah, I think net. Oh, I I think um, Peter. I think you're right. I think Netflix Netflix does that. I think they do a sort of a, a differential, um, whatever you call it. You know, you play half to someone and half to somebody else and see what 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 works. Uh, now something I've really wanted to get back into is the Expanse. I watched um, like the first season. I don't even know how many it is now. Uh, oh, it's on season four. I think I watched the first couple of seasons and I kind of stopped watching it. And I don't know if you do anybody really get this where if you stop watching something, sometimes you can't get back into it. Like you can't be motivated to bother again because you feel that to get back into it, I'd have to start right at the beginning again. Oh, Valerian. We watched it. Floating Fat Man. I watched Valerian my kids this weekend. It was absolutely amazing. I... I can't believe they didn't make a sequel. I can't believe it bombed. Valerian is such a good movie. I mean, after The Fifth Element, it's like that Luc Besson type movie, right? It, I think it was by Luc Besson. It had that same vibe on it. And it's so fantastic. I went to look at the comics for Valerian um, and see if there's any English translated on it. But, oh my God, Valerian. Shit, that is, that is a world that you could just make a TV series on, right? It really, it should just be a TV series. You've got literally, um, uh, from a set standpoint, think about it. The whole world is is in one thing. You you could just set it all totally within the station to start with. Oh, how about this? Um, was it The Edge of Tomorrow down here? That is a great movie. Again, anyone who hasn't seen it should really get on to watching that one. I thought, um, I think it's like Groundhog, sci-fi Groundhog Day, and I love every every second. Kevin, you know what else I wish Valer other than Valerian was successful, right? Dread. Dread. The, the one like the 2016 or whenever it was, Dread movie was absolutely fantastic. I, I just think that was the perfect Dread. We know that they're not going to make any more. I'm pretty sure of it. Carl Urban, though. Jeez, think about it. He's like acting with just this part of his face. And he just like carried it off totally. And just to be fair to like um, Carl Urban, right? Think of, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Pes Pesco, Pe Pedro, Pedro Pascal, right? Who plays the Mandalorian. Think of how much acting he does and he's completely covered up. He's, he's just, you don't see one bit of him, but oh my God, he walks with that swagger. I wish I had a cool walk. I think I probably got a lame walk, but he, he just, he walks like a man. You get that? Rebellion. I don't know what Rebellion, I've got to check out what's Rebellion. God, oh my word. See, Amazon have upped their game. They used to have really crap stuff on here. Oh, Contact. I might watch a bit of Contact. Come on, we need a bit of Jodie Foster. Oh my God, 90s Jodie Foster. Look at that. Now that was based on a book. I definitely remember the book of Contact. I think if it would, would be anything, it would be a Carl Sagan book. And the book was amazing. And then when I watched the movie... To be fair to it, it was pretty damn close to the book. Um, I think that was really good. Ah, oh, for me, the slice floating fat man says right. The sliced Stallone dread is the better movie. He shouldn't have taken the helmet off, but it was a more. Oh come on! Oh, are you saying Urban was too realistic? Yeah, but I think Urban was like the comics. Because I think the comics were a little tongue in cheek. I mean, they they went on for a long period of time, right? So if you get like the the dread case files and you can buy a stack this big and just spend a whole six months reading them, I which I love. I used to do that. Um, it has gone through so many iterations and changes, right? So I think really. 
probably each movie does capture a snapshot of the particular editing and the artwork and everything and the humor at the time. But to me, Dread genuinely is the Carl Urban character. I think that's really his personality. It really is. But you know, to be honest, I I don't I don't like shitting on the original one. I actually quite like that um, Slice Alone movie. I think it's pretty good. To be honest with you, it's absolutely fine. Um, Zardoz. Oh, I have, I remember seeing Zardoz ages ago, but I have to admit admit it's a long time. Castardo. Yeah, you've got definitely a distinct walk. You don't need to act a walk that shows that you've uh, you've. Um, <laughs> seen some manly action over the time and i forgot to ask you right if you don't mind how did you how did you hurt yourself i can't remember how you broke your foot or your leg or your limb i i really can't remember and apologies for that i i'm, I'm sure you mentioned it and I've, I've forgotten about it all of these things i agree with here seinfeld bob's burgers yes futurama i'm bored of futurama i feel i could take it or leave it now to be honest with you the last few seasons of Futurama, I started losing interest. But yeah, The American Office and Parks and Recreation, both of those superb. And I really love the direction that The American Office went. It really turned into its own thing and it went brilliant. You fell over the cargo bike. Oh, OK. Well, that's pretty manly pursuit. Well, I don't even know what a cargo bike is. <clears throat> its manliness might be diminished somewhat, Castardo, if you go on to tell us that a cargo bike is a bike that has a basket clipped over the front handlebars. <laughs> so uh, I, I will let you decide whether or not that uh, uh, you want to share that. Um, what do we think? What did we think about RIPD though? RIPD. I'm not even going to go into Jumanji. I, I, I kind of, I think I got bored during watching Jumanji. But yeah, R.I. R.I.P.D. That, um, Jeff, Richard, uh, Jeff Bridges and Rod Reynolds in it. And they were kind of, it's kind of a weird Ghostbusters police, if, I, if you could describe it at that. Um, the Jumanji sequel was quite good. Well, okay, well, I, I'll look out for the Jumanji sequel. But yeah, anyway, I, I think we're not, we're not going to go too much into an R.I.P.D. conversation because no one's bringing it up, but... I think it's worth watching. I think it bombed in the cinema, but I quite liked it. It was okay. Uh, absolutely fine. What else have we got here? Animes is. Now, <clears throat> I have um, a little bit of a question about the anime that we're getting on Netflix and Amazon. Um, there are good animes, like uh, Attack on Titan. I like that. That's a good one. I like the one where you write the name in the book and they die. I like the little anime movies they do. There's a crazy, like Gantz. Is it called Gantz or Gantz Zero? Or Gantz something that is just mwah, in um, in uh, an anime thing. Um, but also, I'm finding that there is absolutely <laughs> a lot of dross on those things. i got to show you this. This is the bike. This is the bike, Castano's bike, Castano's bike, look at that, look at that bad boy, it does have a basket on the front, I think, <laughs> I think we can't, um, uh, you know, we, no denying about the basket, but damn it, it looks like a homemade thing, and I think it's pretty damn manly, look at that steering geometry, holy hell, it must have a crank. Is there a chain? Is that chain driven or has it got like a bloody like conrod? That is absolutely phenomenal. Now tell me, tell me about, um, I just saw it here about Attack on Titan. Are they actually going to, to make uh, an Attack on Titan series? I've been waiting so long. You know, I'm so sad. I really need to know, are they making any more of that? Can anyone confirm that? Um, Peter says it looks like an old school desk that has an accident with a bicycle. I agree 100%. That does remind me at school. But I like this detail here. If you see, there's some lines here. It's like somebody's drawn on this like decal. Like to say like they were going to maybe cut this out or paint it because it's cool. But it's like, nah, that's just cool enough as a little line drawn with a sharpie. <laughs> I love it. That is 
move a window, a window for the cats. It's my cats! Out of the way! Cats coming through! <laughs> ring, ring! <laughs> There's a plate here. It's got a plate. There's an identity plate here. Oh, hang on, do we have a zoom? Is this the... How do we do it in Google? Maybe that's it. If we can't zoom, it's already at the maximum, but I love it. <clears throat> oh, Costado, I think that's brilliant. You've made my day. Uh, I... It does pain me to think, though, how how your leg just got monched in that. You know, it's, it's only bad things. It's only... It's always a bad thing, obviously, to break a limb, but... Oh, man. I can only imagine that you hit a bump and your leg flung forward, so it's here, and then the whole thing fell on you and crunched up. Oh, sugar, I just noticed. Holy smokes. I, I can't zoom on this, but look... It actually, these are labels. I thought, in my brain, right, it's so used to seeing that um, Shutterstock watermark on everything. I think I just filtered it out. But look here, it does say stuff here. It says D, D-E, D, -E, D I think it's like the, Wi-Fi specialist dot NL. And it says wedge, wedge Wi-Fi frustrati. Red fry five for Strati. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Zephod's just this guy, you know? <laughs> Come on, what's that from? <laughs> ah, oh my god. Right. Something to talk about here. Here's a movie that you probably will not have seen and you'll have bypassed it because it just looks weird. Logan Lucky. Here, Logan Lucky, and that is actually um Oh, what's his name in it? Bond guy. Bond guy's in it. It's absolutely brilliant. If you haven't seen it, I advise you to watch Logan Lucky. It's actually really, really a super duper caper movie. Um, I didn't know what I was going to expect uh, when I saw that, but it was it was totally worth um, watching. Ah, oh, okay. I think I need to start thinking about wrapping this up. There's just too much stuff. It's the problem when you they've got millions of movies. Once you get into it, you really start going through it. It's like this one, The Titan. This is one of those ones that I kind of kind of want to watch, but I think it looks like it's probably going to be pants. Um, Sam Worthington. I don't know. I don't know how I felt about him in that Terminator movie, and it's kind of a budget. Amazon show or something now on Prime. I feel it's going to end badly. And I'd probably rather focus on watching maybe this Parasite movie because I hear really good things about the cinematography and how it's filmed. And that, that interests me. I I don't watch um, too many tech things on the internet. You know when people ask you and they say, what do you watch on YouTube? Is it all of that retro stuff? Um, actually, it's not. Um, I do watch a lot of Cinemassacre, but I actually watch the movie stuff, right? I don't really... I, I do watch some video game stuff, but I really am not into it. But I do watch a lot of cinema critic stuff on, on YouTube. I love uh, movies, TV shows, and cinema in general. And I like to watch people basically crapping on stuff. Um, and then occasionally liking the same stuff that I like, you know? So it's cool. Right, let me have a quiet... <coughs> Did the stream die? Is that what you're saying? Is the stream dead? Is the stream dying? Oh no. What's happening? <laughs> Am I dead? Am I dead? Am I dead? You know what? If you like if you like um there's two um there's two really great YouTube um channels, by the way. Um I'm gonna do it in New Incognito window. One is called Critical Drinker, right? <clears throat> the Critical Drinker, and he's got a YouTube channel. Let's see. Here we go. So, yeah. You know, when it comes to the long... This so Critical Drinker is absolutely smashing it on YouTube now, right? He's absolutely smashing it in, and he deserves every sub he's getting. I am absolutely addicted to the Critical Drinker, and I think I've watched all of his videos, and it's it makes me sad because I've seen them. You know what I mean when you see it? So one is um, the Critical Drinker. I love the Critical Drinker. And the other one is weird. Let me think what it's called. Is it called... 
Cinema snacks. Cinema. Cynic snacks. Oh my god. You gotta watch it. If you haven't, Cynic snacks is gonna be. Go away now! <laughs> Go away now! In New York 20, okay, I'm just gonna just touch one more thing on the Critical Drinker. If you watch his early video, he's basically just a regular guy, right? He's just uh, as regular as I am, talking in his slightly Scottish accent, Glaswegian, I believe, going, you know, if you like these movies, you're gonna like this and that and the other, right? But it wasn't until his character of the Critical Drinker, it's just, it's just something he's developed, and it's com comedic. It's got ritual. You expect certain catchphrases from it. It's absolutely brilliant. Go away now. Now, Cynic Snacks, though, is the absolute um, awesome, an absolutely awesome uh, TV and movie show as well. If, if, if you haven't, if you like The Critical Drinker, please, please add Cynic Snacks to your list or subscribe, whatever, so that you can just make sure you watch some later or tomorrow. Cynic Snacks, I, can't, I don't know the name of the chap who does it, but basically he's got a very interesting um, nerdy, you know, he, he plays Pokemon on Game Boy as a kid and all of that, and he's worked in various companies. I think he worked in some sort of IT stuff, but then he went to work for Disney as an animator and a draw, you know, doing the drawings. So some of his stuff was, you know, on TV and all of that. And then found the passion to make the YouTube stuff as because he's an illustrator and all that. Um, and you can see the quality of the videos and the graphics and the illustrations really improve right down to the opening sequence now, which actually is, is Claymation. Uh, and he, he did all of that himself. But it is absolutely perfect, perfectly produced, P perfectly p p produced. Um, it, it's one of the one of the YouTube channels I think deserves to be big. Um, I, I don't think it's a very old YouTube channel, um, and it, it's going to be. And I think I think you've got to spot this. Very much like, um, you know, the Retro Future? Do you remember, like, uh, way back, way back, I remember saying, watch this guy, Retro Future, he's going to smash it, and he's absolutely stratospheric now. This is going to be, you know, like, sometimes when you see a channel and you know it's, 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 it's just right for YouTube, I think this one, and I think this one will deserve it. As soon as, you, one point, the algorithm is going to just catch on to this. Cynic Snacks, I told you first. Boom. Right. Oh, shit. I, I just wanted to, I really wanted to go to bed. But look at this, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I have to say, oh, the Willem scream. Always. Always, man. <laughs> and the... <laughs> right. <laughs> from what was that movie? It was from, like, uh, that one of those parody, silly movie, American Pie things. Um... The Burbs is great, but I want to just briefly touch upon National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? Um, <laughs> Night Castado. <laughs> oh, you tagged me Attack on Titan Season 4. I didn't even know there was Attack on, Se Attack on Titan Season 2. I don't know where I am. I thought they only made one series. I'm going to catch that up. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that a lot. I'll check it out. Um, I just want to tell you one thing about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? Because... We've all seen it, right, a million times. But I have to say, every year, as far as, as long as I can remember, right, I always watch it with my father. Always. And it's become a bit of a ritual. And there are some Christmases where I don't spend time with my, my family. You know, I've got my own family and maybe we're abroad or something like that. And I always make the effort to watch it. And I think this could be a tradition I'll start with my kids because I think really, and this is my heart of hearts, I think it's one of the, the perfect movies. I think Christmas Vacation, Planes, Trains and Automobiles are just, maybe the Burbs, I think the Burbs fit into that. They're of a generation of movie that were just absolutely um, superb. And I just see Electron Ash, you type Planes, Trains and Automobiles. It, they're... It's a golden age, really. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's they were practical effects movies. The actors were really, really good. You know, they're really high quality. The cast were amazing, and because you can just watch it over, over and over and over again, it just shows really how good they are. I mean, as much as I love, um, for example, maybe The Abyss or Aliens, yeah, it just, 
I've watched them t probably to death too, but nothing like the amount of times I can, I've watched these. I can just sit down at any time. So the Burbs is a good example too. I can just sit down at any time and just watch it. And if I, if it's on, if it catches out of the, um, catch out the eye, uh, you know, corner of my eye and it's on the TV, I'm just going to sit and watch it. I'm going to think about this a little bit, bit more, you know, for the next stream. I'm going to try to compile a list, a list of movies that even if you see a glimpse of it, and it could be anywhere in that movie, it could be at the beginning, middle, end, anywhere in there, that you are going to sit down and go, okay, let's see this through. You know, because you, you, you just love it so much. And I'm just going to just flick back to the the top a little bit, or yeah, I'm just going to look. Ugh, problem is, a lot of new movies here, so we're not going to really have that. I don't know. There might be a category on Amazon where we can find that kind of thing. Oh, Money Pit, Money Pit. Oh my, and it's it's that's a it hardly ever is shown, right? Money Pit, but God, that was so good. And anyone who's done anything with their house can, you know, really, uh, as a kid, it's funny, and then as an adult, it's funny too. And you go, yeah, and it's funny because it's kind of real. <laughs> um, I was hoping that there would be some more movies I could see here. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Nah. I think Raiders of the Lost Ark is a really classic. They're all classics, right? But I think Raiders is probably definitely the best. Hateful Eight is a great movie, but again, I only watched it once. Anchorman, can't be bothered. Now, there's something on Netflix, right? Oh, there's the money pit, right. Oh, Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook. Who has seen that? I have to say, for whatever reason, this movie sort of really resonated with me. And it's not that I um, really experienced any of the issues of the, the characters in here. I think we've all experienced small issues, right? Maybe to a degree, nothing like these. Yeah. But there's something about that movie that really elevated... Um, Oh, God, I can only hardly remember their names anymore. Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence, uh, in my estimation, once I saw this, right? Because you think Bradley Cooper is just sort of from, like, The Hangover, you know, that kind of movie. Um, Jennifer Lawrence from The Hunger Games. You know, they're all, like, a little bit too uh, Hollywood, right? But Silver Linings Playbook... I think really got to show them, show you the best of their acting ability, and I think they were, it was absolutely fantastic. I'm uh, not noticing anyone in the comment mentioning they saw it, so maybe it, it just wasn't one of those movies that that people saw. Um, you you got to remember, I would spend thousands of hours probably if you add it up on aeroplanes over the course of the years with, with work, so. I would be exposed to watching all of the movies. So it's really good because it meant you actually watched a lot of movies that you definitely would have just not watched, right? After you've watched all of the um, uh, Thor movies or something, <laughs> Spider-Man movies, right? But yeah, I really, I would urge anybody, if you want to just watch something that's just totally different, I think it's, it is, it is humorous, right? I don't think, I don't know if it's a comedy. In fact, it does say it's a comedy here. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely humorous, but yeah, it's okay. It's probably like a comedy in the same way that 8 Mile, which is again one of my favourite movies, is, is a comedy, right? 8 Mile, it's, it's a great movie. Watch this one, just watch it, just bloody watch it, yeah? And come into my Discord or ping me on Twitter or something. Just say, Andrew, I watched Silver Linings Playbook. I thought it was good or I thought it was crap. But yeah, just watch it. I need somebody else to talk to about this because nobody in the world seems to have watched it. Right. That's enough now. Go away now. <laughs> oh, Inner Space. Stop it. Stop it. Stop talking about cool movies. Inner Space. Oh, you know what? Okay, I want to talk about Inner Space for one second, right? <clears throat> Let's bring this up, okay, because I do have a tenuous link um, to uh, inner space and God, my mind is at a blank, but I'll get there, right. So we've all seen uh, inner space and it stars, of course, um, I want to say B grade, Kurt Russell, <laughs> B grade, Kurt Russell, Dennis Quaid, right, but he's really good. I mean. I feel sorry for Dennis Quaid. He should have been a lot more popular in his um, career. But I want to talk about Robert. I think his name's Robert Roberto Picardo. I, I don't know if I've got that right. I'm just going to... Uh... 
Uh, I might have the wrong person. Hang on. Let's see. I don't want to be... No, yeah, Robert Picardo, right? I said Roberto, but I mean, that's not racist. Picardo could be, you know, I feel it could be of that sort of Latino thing. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, so Roberto Picardo, right? And by the way, I've got a little story. But just before I go into it, right? I remember talking about Roberto Robert Picardo, Robert Picardo in Twitter a few years ago. I probably deleted those tweets because I deleted all my tweets at one point. I do a purge every now and then. There was a woman who was really into it and she got into a conversation with me, like a tweeting thing or was it on YouTube? I can't remember. She was really into it. He, she was into him sexually and she wanted to just talk about everything about he was in, the shows he was in, how she loved him, how she wants to meet him. Anyway, but Robert Picardo in Inner Space plays the cowboy and I'm trying to think what he said. I'm a hot old cowhand from... Ah, hmm. oh, he had a song. She, I can remember a little bit of it. But I can't remember the song. But yeah, he was crazy in that. Now, the reason I brought it up is because, if you recall, he was the emergency ship's hologram in Voyager, right? That's kind of where most people know him from, yeah? Uh, I'm an old cowhand from the Rio Grande. That's what he sang in, in Inner Space. And um, basically, uh, he was in the e EMH or EMF, EMA, yeah, EMH, yeah? And, but I watched yesterday that thing, the guy who did Family Guy, you know the sci-fi show he did called, oh my God, what the hell is it called? Oh, it's like a piss take of Voyager a little bit. It's a, uh, oh my God, the Family Guy sci-fi TV show. Oh my God. Anyway, the, the, the reason I bring it up is because last night I was watching it and the episode I watched, the Orville, thank you, Mr. PGT, the Orville, it had Robert Picardo in it uh, and he was, it was dark. It was dark. Does anybody know the one I'm talking about? It was the one where the security officer wants to go, has to go back to her planet because her bones are deteriorating because it's got super high gravity and she has to, to go back to uh, the planet to rebuild her. Um, but it was super dark. And I said, wow. I, I remember telling somebody, I said, this episode is super dark, right? This is where Star Trek would never, ever venture. But they went there. I love the Orville. The Orville pushes the boundaries. It's super funny, but also like it has really dark or or challenging storylines. You get yeah, exactly, Kevin. You got it. You got it right. Oh, Mensky, don't you you aren't a Discovery fan? I mean, I quite like the disc. I like Discovery. I'm I'm really I'm really quite into it. I uh, I'm not I'm not like the people who hated on it because. I think any any sci-fi and any high-quality sci-fi is good for me, and I, I could get into the Discovery world. I mean, I think maybe I disassociate my brain a little bit from the original stuff we used to watch, but then I had to do that for Enterprise, and I really... Enterprise petered out for me. I couldn't watch the end of Enterprise. Um, but yeah, I oh, the Tardy Gates. I don't know about that, Electron Ash, but if you watch later on, it totally moves on from all of that stuff, to be honest. It's its own... It's, it's got its own thing. I think it's getting its its swing right now. Um, I absolutely adore it. Oh, this... Okay, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant for po posting that for me about the Attack on Titan Season 4. I'm going to... I really appreciate that. Um, uh, Michael Burnham. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think that Michael Burnham's character is becoming less of a character in it, to be honest with you. I kind of think they're almost like... I'm trying to think of TV shows where they had that. You know where they sort of wrote, all wrote, revolve around a particular character, but they kind of move away from that as it moves on? Um, well, I don't know, Mensky. I, th I think... <laughs> I think I think it's like you can't always have the clappy happy without the dark a little bit. I, I kind of like, why would, uh, I don't know. You know, it's evolving. I had this discussion today with somebody, right? You know, a lot of us are in our, coming up to our 40s or in our 40s, like me. And we have to to appreciate that the, the people who are, are paying money or want to watch these things are a lot younger than us. And they're in their 20s and they live in a world that's totally different now. Um, yeah, we're not even mentioning Picard. And I tell you what, I really hated Picard. I hated it so much. I just couldn't stand it, right? But I give it another go and I'm into it now. So I think, again, you have to just take it for what it is. I kind of like it as it is. Just, just I just see this as parallel set in Star Trek universe things. But... Um... <laughs> 
I like how Wikipedia now just has no information about anything. <laughs> it's just no pictures. I just want pictures. I just I do more of my searches in YouTube pictures, and not just because it's grot. Uh, yeah, I think it's okay. I think I think Picard's getting its um, stride now. It's okay. Um, I, I quite like it. I quite like the whole holographic ship. It's got a lot of stuff that just ticks the boxes for me. Um, I don't like... You know what I don't like, though, in these shows? You think you would like it, but you don't. I don't like where they revisit other characters. I don't like where, you know, you're watching Discovery and they talk about Picard. I don't like in Picard where he goes and meets Riker. Not that, you know, I, I like the character. I like them as people, yeah? And I, I like it a little bit at that superficial level, but it always feels shoehorned in a story. It always feels like if I add this nostalgic thro uh, throwback, then people will like my thing more. It's just like a, by association. I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's needed, to be honest with you. Um, but I do like that episode in TNG. <laughs> okay, TNG, Riker, Irish racist <laughs> is that it? the long ladder is that the episode no i don't know this one is it <laughs> to be sure to be sure riker will you wash my feet <laughs> and the bit oh okay let's see if i can do this and we're gonna have to go full screen for this it was like oh is this this is the <laughs> The synthesized ale wasn't doing it. The synthesized whiskey wasn't doing it from Worf give him some something, you know, Romulan brandy. And he's like... <laughs> Did a little jig. That was it. I thought it was the most... When you watch it now, it's the most racist thing you've ever seen. But totally fine. <laughs> totally fine at the time. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if anybody else saw that, but that's it. Up the long ladder. Will you wash me feet, Riker? Wash it! Wash them! <laughs> okay, so Kevin says there hasn't been any good Star Wars since the original trilogy. The other films tarnish the originals. Well, I have to agree on that. I hate where they retcon, like, okay, retcon Anakin Skywalker, end of, I think, Return of the Jedi? Um, or something. Whatever. Let's try it. Yeah, it's stuff like that. That annoys me, right? Because you got it here. Look, that's the original. Then they're blatzing in Anakin. That's the kind of stuff I hate. Yeah, I really... That annoys me. And then you're going to get to a point at some point where when you um, watch, you'll, you'll want to watch the original cut, right? And it won't exist anymore. And you'll only get um, this one. And it's like erasing history. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Electron Ash. I don't know. Uh, okay, I'm going to disagree with that person, right? Because that's one thing I did do, right? I got a hooky box set from like Korea or something. And it was like all of the, the episodes. It was like six. Do you know we had six or was it more? Anyway, I think it was at least the first six movies. You know, not... I say not chronologically, because they were chronologically in its universe, right? And I have to say, they did a bloody good job butting up all the movies, because the things they retconned, um, they kind of made it seamless, so that if you watch the movies all in the that order, one, two, three, four, five, six, I thought it actually fit really well, to be honest. I know, like, The Phantom Menace and all that, it looks well jank. Yeah, now, if you watch it, I think that's the best description. Well, jank. And Anakin in the late... Oh, my God. What a whiny little bitch. Oh, my... Uh, uh. He's like a stroppy teen, right? It's so annoying. But apart from that, um, I think it actually... It's okay. I think it's okay all in order. I think it's all in... Co so, um, yeah, I think... I don't know, Mensky. I think... <sighs> If it's too doom and gloom. But it's all like that, right? It's all Game of Thrones and sexy. The only thing I'm thinking about Star Trek, the Discovery thing, it's lacking a lot of boobs. And I remember we were getting a lot of that. Do you remember, like, Spartans? Was it Spartan, Blood and War? Game of Thrones? Uh, Westworld? I think we were getting getting used to a lot more sexualization and nudity in shows. 
So I'm almost disappointed now when there's not any. I kind of expect it to be the norm. So at least they're doing that. They're kind of at least keeping some sort of value so I can watch it. I could potentially... Actually, I'm going to say, could I watch Discovery? Not Discovery. Is it Discovery? Am I, am I getting confused now? Damn it. Whatever the new Star Trek is anyway. Uh, with my kids. Uh, I don't think I could watch it with my kids. I think it's too much. It's too much. Whereas all the original Star Trek stuff was definitely uh, kid friendly. Why am I? Oh yeah. Sorry. It's Discovery. I'm getting confused. I was saying Discovery. But in my head I'm seeing Voyager and like Kleenex and all of them lot. But no. Yeah. Discovery is the new one. <laughs> Where, the, where are my space norks? Yeah, and I want to see what's the effects of gravity. There's a there's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of, of questions that need to be uh, answered. Um, I liked... Uh, so Kevin's talking about Rogue One, yeah? I have to say, though, I quite like those spin-off ones. I think I like the Han Solo... I don't mind... To us, I don't mind any of the new movies. People are really critical about them, but I'm, I'm absolutely fine with them. I'm, I'm not so engrossed... In, ingrained in the Star Wars universe to really feel I've got a, a, a dog in the fight. I just really enjoy them. I just like sci-fi. It's got lasers, shooting, running around. It's like the Mandalorian people shit on it, but I quite like fetch quests. Every week is a fetch quest. It's like, I like that. You see it. He does his thing. End of episode. Let's move on. It's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, I like that Han Solo stuff. Um, I like Road One. I like those those things that are just set in the same universe. It's actually a, a relief, to be honest, because you don't necessarily have all of those same characters anymore. They might not even be really mentioned in it, and you can just enjoy it for what it is. Um, I think probably that's why The Mandalorian, for me, um, really, I think, is the most complete kind of feeling I'm getting of the Star Wars universe to be honest with you because he's going around traveling to all of these different planets some of them we're familiar some of them are new he's meeting these different species it's exploring those relationships and how those outer, outer frontier um, planets operate um, it's got the remnants of the Empire it's got the uh, I don't know what they call them is it the Federation the good guys I don't remember what um, the only thing I don't really like about it right and feel free to comment about this or slag me off if I'm wrong on it. What I don't like is, why do everybody think of the Jedi as some sort of mystical, like, fantasy creatures? Considering the Jedi was like a massive political paramilitary government, arm of the government, right? Which was like 20 years before where Mandalorian is set. Yeah, if you think about it, it's, it's really that type of time period. It's not a massive one. How do none of them believe in it? It's like us believing that, you know, there's this guy called Tony Blair and he was like running the country for Labour and they're like, nah, mate, it didn't exist. You know what I mean? It doesn't make, nah, mate, nah, that never happened. It's a conspiracy. How can they be so forgetful um, uh, about that? Yeah, and it, as you say, it's got a lot of nostalgia because it's, it's really basically... Um, uh, I, th I think it's it, I think it's just a great representation snapshot of the things. You still have the X wings in it because, of course, they would still have them. The X wings themselves as men really old anyway. Even in the the movies, it's, it, all of this stuff is legacy hardware. Uh, it's just a nice twist. In fact, I'm just thinking to myself: Is there a Mandalorian probably that I haven't seen right now because it's out every Friday, and that would be something I definitely would want to see. Okay. All right, guys, I think it really is probably a good time to call it a night. I'm going to grab some strepsils. I've spent literally all day talking. Great day. Great meetings. If you ever have one of those really good work days, you know, everything's feel fulfilling. That was one of those days for me. I really enjoyed it. Um, but, yeah, I could just go on all night talking about the Jedi and these things. So we'll, we shall have a catch up, I think. Um I know we don't talk about it as much as we should in the Discord or on Twitter, but any time anybody wants to talk to me about sci-fi, movies or books or anything like that, please just hit me up. Just comment. Just tell me something's shit, you know. Or if you've watched Ozark and you remember I was talking about it, come and chat to me about Ozark. Um, yeah, so really, have a great night, guys. Um, yes, live long and prosper. May the forks be with you. Uh... See you tomorrow. 
all of us. Cheerio, our beans. Away with you!